Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Liberal 12th Man Show. I'm Liberal 12th Man, and I am joined by Brian and JK, our co-pilots for today, for Fire Up This Live Bird. How are you doing, Brian? All good, all good. All good, okay. And JK? Always good, bro, always good. Okay, okay, and I hope that everyone's doing well out there in the chat as well. Uh, big up, Ensman, Ensman TV, big up, big up. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, participating on Ensman TV uh, recently. We chopped it up on some really cool topics as well. Uh, got into uh, some interesting little, um, you know, here's and there's with uh, with some of our players and some of the, the uh, mindsets of some of these um, the fan base and also maybe some of these content creators, you know, like the directions that we all go in and such. Um, it's certainly been a fun little uh weekend for some of us, I guess, if we're, uh, if you're a U.S. Men's National Team supporter, I guess. Uh, but other than that, it was just friendlies, 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 and friendlies got to see, basically, um, basically we saw what I had on that thumbnail, and that is what I wanted to talk about today. And that is, uh, you know, it seems like there's a bias out there when it comes to Liverpool fans, Liverpool, excuse me, uh, Liverpool players not being selected for the U.S. Uh, for the U.S. <laughs> team or the English uh, national team. A little, little bit of blurred up here in my head there. Um, I, I guess maybe it's because of uh, Gerard and, and, and El Nino behind me. You know, when you're around legends, sometimes you get a little bit, get a little flustered in the thoughts. But I wanted to go over what what is it about Liverpool players and this English team that it seems to be that we just don't get the type of appreciation, it seems like, or maybe even recognition or appreciation uh, or even opportunities that other clubs, such as like Manchester United, most notably, and to tend to get over Liverpool. Um, Brian, I was going to ask you, like, you, you, yeah, you've, you've seen the thumbnail, you kind of get a gist of what I, what I was getting at. Do you believe that there's a bias out there when it comes to um, selecting United players over uh, United players or other players in general over uh, Liverpool players when it comes to the England uh, squad. Uh, it's, uh, look, I'm I'm not an England fan, so right, I don't. I know, you know. I know. You know they go off, and uh, I I know I know our players go, and then. Well, apart from that, I don't unless there's some kind of big thing going on. It doesn't really. I, I can tell you maybe what half their squad is. Um, I think uh, my my bit my instincts would tell me that there is no real bias against Liverpool. That really, it's a manager like Gareth said, Okay, you know, in terms of like the bias, there is. Um, yeah, there's a slant in certain ways, but you know that I'm not English and I'm not from Liverpool. But the relationship between England and Liverpool has always been extremely difficult. You know, it's never been straightforward. And, mm -hmm. But I think that any time we've ever had an England player that's been good enough to play for England, they've been picked. I think maybe if it's um, if we're talking about maybe this Kobe Minot thing seems to have gotten it off the start. I I I wouldn't really be overly um, foster linking it to Kobe Minot. Like Kobe, Kobe Minot was, was born, I don't know, 18 years ago, right? 19 years ago, um, grew up somewhere, was good at football, played for Man United, and one day he got picked for England. To me, in my mm -hmm. mind, that doesn't have anything to do with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, mm -hmm. This guy, Southgate picks his favourites. That's what he's always been criticised for. Again, I'm not an England fan. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like, but that's what he always get criticized for. And I think he has mm -hmm. his favorites, I think, regardless of who they play for. You know, the the biggest the clubs at the or the boys at the best clubs are usually the best players. So yeah, more Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, that's where they all tend to come from. There's not you know, the best players. Uh they don't have um uh an amazing defensive kind of unit at the moment, but they've got lots of numbers. But mm -hmm. I think is there, you know, would there be a bias? There's look, yeah, the relationship, like I say, between England and Liverpool is is not a um, harmonious one at the best of times. 
So I think Southgate has his people. I don't think he knows how to really use Trent, and I don't think he has enough time because Trent is a system player in terms of needing a system built around him, basically. And in international football, you only have so long to train players. You don't have time to kind of come up with lots of different things. So I think that's why Trent loses out more more than anything else, is that he has more solid options and he doesn't have the tactical ability, really. Or maybe that's one, one way of saying it. Or he doesn't have the time to come up with a system, get the best out of Trent and win games because that's his job at the end of the day. They don't have many games. So that's a long way of saying, no, I don't think there's a bias. Um, <laughs> but I do think that there is, uh, he has a bias towards his players. So I think it's if you're not one of his guys, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter who you play for. If you're not one of his, his favorites that were, then you, you have the best chance. Like he was still picking Jordan Henderson when he went to Saudi. Jordan, Jordan right. Anderson, Liverpool there. Right. And that's the thing. I'll, I'll, I was, I know, I know again, like we, we did go uh, to you first, Brian. I know that you represent Ireland to the fullest. And that's why I also, I, but I did say JK, who does uh, have English ties and, and does represent England uh, in this, in this case, at least. Uh, for giving us, uh, in this case at least, I said, you know, JK, uh, mm-hmm. to, to, uh, to kind of give his feel as to when it comes to English players, do you think that there is a bias out there uh, against Liverpool players? I mean, we all have, we mm-hmm. all know the, the obvious reasons as to why, you know, um, we, a lot of people think that, you know, um, you know, whether it's the, the, um, the booing of the national anthem or, um, or if it's, uh, you know, some of the, the slights that the crown has taken against Liverpool, um, you know, in general, um, is that maybe bleeding over into, um, into their, into some of these, you know, uh, the direction of, of, of representation for the nation when it comes to the club mm-hmm. and making sure that some of these, these other clubs that do quote unquote, you know, signify what. England is all about, I guess, do they uh-huh. make a more concerted effort to bring their stars in into the limelight as opposed to Liverpool players? What's so, yeah, I feel when you look at England as a country, it's probably one of the most biased countries in the whole world. Mm. When you grow up there and stuff like that, you will see it on your journey when you're growing up. Certain, certain things like um, if you might be the best at something, but mm. because you don't fit in the picture... Your 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 journey will come to an end there, and I feel when it comes to football, I think they've taken the politics side of Liverpool mm. and sort of brought the football team into the equation as well. Um, Frank said it a number of times: if it wasn't for football, it sort of say Liverpool in the seventies mm. and eighties when they were getting politically dr- uh, pressured in so many ways and stuff. And I think. Um, when you look at Southgate, for example, um, he's he's going to be singing the national anthem. He's English, number one. And uh, I think he's sort of taken it a bit too far for, because I feel the time when we, ha- when we won the league uh, with Trent, Henderson and Gomez, all three should have been starting for England then. Um, mm-hmm. And for some reason, they, they never really started together in an England team. Um Maybe, like, I think in the old days, it sort of meant more if you was called up and you wasn't called up. I think slowly, slowly, um, us fans are saying, you know what, it's a blessing in disguise. He's not going to get mm-hmm. injured playing two friendlies that you don't need to play. Um, Nations League tournament, you know, that one that popped up from nowhere. So things like this. So sometimes it's sort of a blessing in disguise. When Gomez got called up now, I wasn't really happy tell you the truth um i was saying i wish he had two weeks off because that guy's been playing a lot of football mm-hmm. um so he got a subs appearance the other day um who'll be training every day with england as well then so they've got a mm-hmm. <laughs> they've got another mm-hmm. friendly coming up that was my dog and um mm-hmm. yeah but for me the whole international story liverpool i think there is a bias there and it's sort of embarrassing as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was. Uh, I'll read you out the the comment that he made, or at least uh, South Southgate made about picking um, Manu over um, over Elliot. So Southgate said last month that he sees Manu as a progressive player rather than a defensive midfielder, the role he's typically played under Eric Ten Hag. So Eric Ten Hag has him as being a more of a defensive midfielder, as, and but yet you know. Um, Southgate wants to use him as a as a more progressive player, as in wants to put him in uh in a more advanced position. So he says that he thinks that he's doing brilliant for a young player that and we're never slow to put a young player into seniors. Interesting. But he's only had a handful of games, and you have to be very careful development-wise and making those decisions at the right time. So we think ideally we should allow him the space to develop at his own speed. He's not at the point in terms of number of games as that Jude or um or uh, Bukayo, uh, were when they came in for the first time. But I repeat, he's doing really well for a young player. He's a good football footballer. You can see that. And he's getting some fabulous experience with Manchester United at the moment. And he looks like a real good character. Um, I was saying, I was primarily looking at also, which is very interesting to me, is that is Elliot ever going to really see playing time at at for England is is a, is a question I was going to raise too because if you really look at it, excuse me, um, when it comes to England attacking midfielders even right wingers, you know, um, there's a long line of of people in front of him possibly that Elliot might not get into that role. It's just interesting that this that. Manu, uh -huh. who's again playing a defensive midfielder position, or you know, or is being more like a, a DM somewhat, um, or at least a defensive um, perspective of, a, of 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 the midfield for Manchester United, got to kind of skip the line. But whether it's Saka, whether it's Bellingham, whether it's Foden, Cole Palmer, all are pretty much we could all say they're pretty much solidified ahead of Elliot, and then you have even Connor Gallagher. In that at 24, I mean, Sock is 22, Bellingham's tw Bellingham, Ham is 20, Foden's 23, Cole Palmer is 21, uh, Gallagher's 24. Um, there's a lot of players in front of him in, in that pecking order. And then you even get to a point where if you do want to go into that, maybe that 10 or even that right wing position, you know, also you have uh, Jared Bowen at, at 27 and you have James Madison also at 27. Um, with that, with that bulk of players there, do you think that, do you think that Elliot, that, cause his, his run at U21s is yeah. going to end. It's about to end. So yeah. it's like, basically he's, he's got the English, English, uh, English under 21s and he's helping them with the U21s to qualify for the fixtures for European fixtures, but, um, he'll be ineligible to play with the U21s in next year's tournament. So this is kind of like the the you know the the um, the uh, you know the, the crescendo yeah, I, I hear it well. of, of his thing. But go ahead, Brian. You want to, you want to comment? Yeah, no, I hear. It. I I know you're asking. I'm just at the start. I was, I was kind of thinking. All right, so this is a Kobe Minu versus Elliot thing. Mm -hmm. Is that what this is? Is that it's like because if I'm thinking England, right? Just just the last ten years, right. I'm struggling to think of a Liverpool player that was English that was any good that didn't play regularly for England. You know, as we spoke about Trent, there, there was that's really the only re that's the only issue. Mm -hmm. You know, Gerrard played all the time. Henderson played all the time. Milner was never a starter because he was a utility player, but and he was older. You know, but he got plenty of caps mm -hmm. for England. Uh, Jamie Carragher got plenty of caps for England. I'm just trying to think of what what famously overlooked England players there were. You know, Michael Owen. Mm -hmm. When I go back to that, like Fowler, they, like Fowler was never an England regular, but lots of strikers. Because you said you kind of pointed out the problem there yourself, and for J.K. as well. This comes into this other question: Is the amount of players sometimes that are ahead of you in the pecking mm -hmm. order? Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Gomez was never getting called up for England squads. He was because of the players that normally were ahead of him. And he wasn't ever going to be first choice in anything. 
I get it. He was, or I admit, or admit, I agree, it was strange when we were winning the league. But if you look at um, Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister winning league titles for Man United, barely ever got a kick for England. Mm-hmm. You know, like this, that can happen sometimes where these guys just you look at some of the guys in different squads. So I think a lot, sometimes it is, it just comes down to the fact that managers will always have favourites. And it's favourites is thrown around sometimes in a bad way, but it's managers to play a certain way and want certain things, have a group of players that they know they can trust and, and rely on. Like I said, because they only get them for a short period of time. And they'll want to have that kind of core group. And then add bits and pieces around it. And so then, like you were saying then, if it comes to, right, who, who am I going to pick in this position? The amount of players that mm-hmm. are on a list that, that Harvey Elliott would be looking at, mm-hmm. it's massive. It's the same with like that right-hand mm-hmm. side. It's massive. So there's always really good players that don't play well, just unfortunately by playing in that same position as the three other best players or something like that. England mm-hmm. will call up bad players, yeah, because they'll be short. But I can't really, I couldn't stand up and like, you asked me to go and do like a school debate. I couldn't go and stand on the side that Liverpool, that England don't pick Liverpool players because they have done constantly. Anytime they're really good, they were, mm-hmm. they were always playing for England. So, but, but with Harvey Elliott, yeah, I think he is someone who has real issues or problems or whatever you want to look at it in becoming a, an England regular, purely because of who's always going to be in, in front of them. Yeah, there's a... Yeah. Uh, how about you, JK? Yeah, yeah, I just thought the names you just mentioned there, bro. Um, one thing that could help Elliot this season is if he's in a winning title-winning team, uh, for him to have some sort of hope to get to the Euros, you know. Um, you've got James Madison in there. Bowen, Foden, like for me, Foden should start, will start in the first 11. But for me, Elliot, the way he's played in the last two months, he deserves to sort of call up uh, as well. I think like when you look at Maino, the guy from Manchester United, the guy's just been playing for like five weeks or five months. I don't know how long he's been playing for. And back in the old days, a guy would have to be playing five years to just about get a call up for the England team. Right, to be a regular they, on do, the team. Like, they do think he's special. This kid, I will say that to JK. I don't like. I don't watch him, but like, just from mm-hmm. neutral, they, they, they. It's not some random kid. Like apparently, this kid is pretty special. No, no. Again, does know, he play so, okay, bro? I'll tell you the truth. You I know, think he played pretty well. Yeah. Well, I'm with you. Look, it, it used to be, yeah, playing for England used to be a bigger thing and not a more difficult thing, right? Hmm. You there? Yeah, yeah. Oops. Okay, I think okay, you missed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost my uh, my I lost my uh, my microphone for a second there. Um, yeah. So I wanted so to just, also uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Say no, we, we, no, me and Brian were just on about like the main uh, lad. I think he played pretty well against us. Um, oh. When we were just saying like the way the hype. Youth players nowadays is is sort mm. of it's not really good for the lad. Okay, the lad's probably thinking, look, I'm 18, I'm getting into the England team. Mm-hmm. It might come too early for the guy, like Harvey Elliott. The way he stepped up in the last two months, he's he's a he's got a lot of bit. He's got experience, Elliot, with us. He's played some big games right. for us as well, so he could well, handle an England team. You know. Yeah, well, that's what Bonkers brings up what I was saying. Like, as in, I know that Brian said he doesn't can't think of someone that's not getting really overlooked. Mm-hmm. I, I think that, you know, Curtis is another player that's been playing really well. I understand he's injured right now. 
But I mean, like uh, before he was getting calls up for obviously the U21s. But, you know, um, we do, I just think of it like, you know. Oh, he'd be in the big, squad. Sorry. If he hadn't gotten injured, if he had been, been playing yeah, the way he yeah, was, yeah. And he, yeah, yeah. he would have been, been called up for the squad. Yeah, you, we can't yeah, assume yeah. he wouldn't have. Okay. No, I think, I'm not know, saying so he wouldn't have. Oh. I'm not saying he wouldn't have for oh, this well, particular yeah. spot. I'm saying though he hasn't, as in, there's are, there's been internationals before this too that he wasn't mm -hmm. called, and he was healthy for, and he didn't get yeah, called. Yeah, he's only come into that kind of top form though recently though. Yeah, that's I yeah. I timeline it perfectly mm -hmm. like that. He missed he lost his squads because he wasn't playing very well. Now mm -hmm. he's got like and yep, yeah, to when he's because playing like that for us. Yeah, no, sorry, yeah, I, when he just said it, like, yeah, if he, if he was still playing like that, he'd been fit, and he was playing every every week, he's definitely in this squad, especially, like, I don't know mm -hmm. if the Euros, right, but this, especially mm -hmm. for these friendly, mm -hmm. definitely, um, Jones' yeah. form, he was, you know, he, he's a, he's a South Gagey type of player as well, I think. Mm -hmm. He is, certainly, he is, certainly, yeah. you would think, you would think they would be, at least, um, I just know that he has he has been playing alongside Curtis was playing alongside some of those um so those, those really good runs for the uh, U21s uh, mm -hmm. with Elliot where he was really um, you know uh, putting in some some uh, some good good displays and even playing DM I remember at some parts and points for for the for the squad. England's mm -hmm. under seventeen to under twenty trees are some two of the best teams in in their category in the world. The under 21s, mm -hmm. the under 17, especially under 23s. Mm -hmm. Really strong team. If you saw them, they'd be like, well, hang on a minute. Most of those guys played in the Premier League last week. Mm -hmm. And that's the level like it is as players like Jones and Elliot, kids like that. You know, they, they've got real quality there. So that's, mm -hmm. again, is another thing. It's like, oh, why doesn't he get in? And we've got four or five other lads around going, oh, well, I think I should be in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard, but I think with the main thing, I don't think he's coming out and I think he's just having a look at the kid. Yeah, he's just taking okay. him on a two-week friendly thing. Just have a look at him. See how he gets on around the senior squad, see how he acts and all that stuff. You know, they criticize him over there for not trying new things and, you know, trying to bring mm -hmm. in new players. So, mm -hmm. um, is he's this, not a manager it, it, you want, but he's not a manager you want, is he? Imagine getting linked to him after these things got back. Oh, man. No, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, yeah I mean, that's that is what it is. That's another reason why. I mean, like maybe it's less about the fact of, um, and I, I think one of the reasons why I was bringing this up, maybe it's less about the fact of that it's it's a, a testament of Elliot's form or a testament of Elliot's, um, you know, ability or talents, and maybe maybe more so just a testament of like just Southgate having, as you spoke on, having his favorites, and also not necessarily looking at um and just not only having his favorites but taking that talent or making the talent go to the point where um yeah they're just going to get a look at him or something like that because realistically you know it is interest it is interesting that you know he's giving this guy an opportunity um after he's had a good a couple good runs of of, of form and games and yet you know it's just why i've thought about the harvey elliott versus manu is because Harvey Elliott has been having a pretty good season, pretty good season. Not a couple, not a not a couple good games. He's been having a pretty good season, and and um, Elliott doesn't doesn't play on the left side, but he could if you you could put him on the left if you really wanted to, but you probably won't wouldn't. No, yeah, um, no. But still, it's just one of those things. That maybe it's a log jam. It's too much of a log jam for him to actually get involved in the pecking order on that right side. And if that's the case, it's it's kind of a shame. But, I mean, it is kind of maybe even a blessing in the sky for us as Liverpool fans if we're just looking at it from a club perspective. Of, you know what? Maybe um, maybe it's a blessing in the sky that we don't have to necessarily see him play in at least those games. Um, he's still getting U21 call-ups, obviously, but, you know, um, he's not getting it on the level of playing against these, uh, this, these you know, senior players. In a sense, and, and we can keep them keep them healthy and fit. I just want to yeah. say, uh, bless to uh, Neon uh, Grave. Well, oh, big up, over. yeah, big up, big up, Neon Grave. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Um, 
I wanted to get into basically a little roundup of of like what speaking of international players, what the roundup of like we saw the players actually do this weekend, and um, and uh, Joe Gomez was pretty much the only Liverpool player in the England senior squad. Um, but uh, again, we just spoke on Harvey Elliott. Um, uh, Kwanzaa got a call up as well for the U21s for their Euro qual qualifiers. Um, he didn't. Uh, he did. Uh, Kwanzaa didn't get a get a start. He didn't get to play in, the, in that game, uh, which is kind of interesting to me. But like, um, but all the same, it's all good. Um, I'm not really going to fret at it. I think like you know, from a from a Liverpool bias, I guess you could say. You know, when I see some of these players not getting playing time, kind of like, uh, am I, I'm happy, you know, it's, I'm happy for those that need the rest and I'm happy for those that are getting the playing time that need to find the form, you know, um, because this weekend, I guess, uh, one of the big, big names that got a goal, uh, this weekend was, uh, Dominic Svasilai, uh, played against Turkey. I don't know if anyone watched that game, you know, um, did you, actually, I don't even know. Was the, was, uh, hung, was it in Hungary or is, was it in Turkey? Did, do either of you know? I can pull it up. If, if, if it was in Hungary. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I, I, I was only asking that question primarily because of what, um, what, what's been going on basically in Turkey lately, you know, with the club mm -hmm. and with some of the, some of these reports about like the, the crowd interactions is just horrible to see. And we're going to get a little bit into that in, in a little bit as well as it, as it's impacted in other areas of the world, of course. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, Sabasalai had the only goal of the game. He scored, um, scored on a penalty um, right at the beginning of the second half, uh, which it was, which was uh, again, the only goal for the, for the game. So Dominic saw one, nothing win for, for uh, Hungary. Did you did any do either of you get to see the game or did anyone in the, the chat see the game? Nope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> are you Brian, are you a fan of the national game like that? Or do you like or No, I just don't I don't even know where I would have been able to watch that game. It's up. you know what I mean? I would have to go and seek it out, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't mm -hmm. just randomly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wouldn't have known. I'm not sure if I'd have a TV channel that game would be on. But uh, okay. I don't like um, I don't like sort of the, this kind of whole the, the qualifying stuff because it's uh, yeah, it's it's kind of the worst of international football probably because it goes on for two years qualifying games and you mm -hmm. know yeah, kind of the random kind of encounters and stuff and. These uh, friends, would you prefer? Well. Would you prefer no. Real quick, would you prefer? And this is for uh, I'll let you answer, then I'll let JK. And in the chat, please tell me your opinion too. Would you prefer maybe if we just had like a month of just all international play, just deals with like a month or something, or you know, for, or something like that? So, um, I think they tried to do something like that before, <clears throat> or someone had mm -hmm. that suggestion of kind of uh, putting it into a month. But like mm -hmm. I said, that kind of stuff would make it more kind of tournamenty, and people could would engage with it more because any kind of uh, international, like as far as I'm concerned, the World Cup is still the best. You know, the last one wasn't great. You know, during, but just in terms of yeah, of football, because it's more of a level. Or the World Cup is is the best kind of football because you know you, you get to see upsets and you get to see top players on poor teams. You know. Like a Haaland mm -hmm. playing for a Norway if you're in a cup, you know, these guys were normally at these all conquering teams, you know. Mm -hmm. But then they're like Ibrahimovic when he's playing for Sweden, you know. This kind of mm -hmm. obviously not a messy with Argentina, but yeah, some of these really big players and they're playing for smaller teams, which is really brilliant mm -hmm. to see. And you get these so that for me is my favorite kind of football is World Cup. But all the rest of it, like the qualifying stuff, just takes too long. And like the Euros as well is really cool tournament football. But if mm -hmm. they were to do the whole thing, and you get, like they were kind of looking at it, and then UEFA and FIFA would kind of made it basically impossible. But mm -hmm. everybody wants to do some kind of version of 
getting everyone together, like during making it almost a, a winter break, almost to a degree, but not really. I don't know. It's like they because we've still like there'll only ever be 365 days in a year, and they keep trying to invent more tournaments and invent yeah. longer, you know, and more, and more things like that. So I, I don't really see. Like when these guys, we want, we know what would be right. We know what would work. What, well. but when it's when you've got these guys in charge, asking them or expect them to actually do something like that. Yeah, you know, I think by this stage, you know, these guys, you couldn't write like this is basically like we've been away for the last twenty years. It's like, I mean, it's like the Sopranos over there. You know, they, that's how corrupt and crazy these guys are. So, you, you throw enough money at them, they'll invent a new tour. Whereas all the fans just want quality, quality, quality. Make fewer tournaments, you know, give players more time off. Condense it down in those things into a month. That that just makes too much sense for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about for you, JK? Because I know what the, I can see yeah. what the chat's saying too, uh, kind of directing towards is that like, you know, there's just not enough, there's too much football in a sense. I mean, no one never thought you would say that per se. But I mean, like maybe that's just, just too much football. Yeah. And not um, when you look at the injuries popping up in the game now, uh, compared to the old days, where you have your World Cup qualifications, the odd friendly, and that's it, and then you have mm -hmm. the Euros uh, qualification, odd friendly, and that's it. Now you got that that Nations League tournament that came in for me was so I, I didn't even understand what they're doing there. They should think, you know what, mm. these guys need a rest. Let's have an inter international break with no football. You know, us guys mm. love football. We love when there's a game on every day. Come on, don't get me wrong. But for me, I'm looking at the players now and thinking, why is he always injured? Why is, why is this happening, you know? So for me, it's more to do with the, the players' sort of welfare and how are they going to be for the club? If you understand my point, because like sure. these guys are more club guys, say than international guys. So for me, Van Dijk playing for Holland um, played the other day. He'll probably play again tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so would I really want him to play them games? Not really, but I think Virgil's in a sort of phase of his game right now. He could play every game, I think, because he's playing mm -hmm. so well. And Liverpool are sort of up there. I thought um, him being the captain now sort of gives you an extra energy. So for some guys, it's okay. But for some, too much football is not good for their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he says, um, let's see. Um, MK Toe uh, says, not enough rest. Wait till the, <clears throat> wait till the new UCL. Um, wait till the new... So I can bring it up for you. Wait till the new UCL. Oh, wait till UCL format kicks in. Looks nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because of TV revenue, more playing time. It's happening to other sports like F1 and MotoGP as well. Harvey, mm -hmm. um, Harvey. Dustin says about Harvey oh, still cool. looks small, so managers like Southgate don't know how to use them or have not brave enough. I would have called him up, or he would have called him up. Yeah. Um, it looks like a lot of times when it comes to a lot of these games, it's about getting it's, – it's, it's important to get these games in, of course, but I just always think of, like, if they were to do something like I just suggested where they do maybe, like, a two-month or even maybe, like, a – maybe even a 60-day or 45-day segment or something like that, maybe even, like, a little bit longer than a month, month and a half or something, so you make sure that you, they can get some actual rest time as well into some of these events – that would be interesting enough, or if you're going to not going to, but the U.S. for obviously U.S. The, the these federations definitely want to have um, money, revenue, some type of revenue coming other than just when they play in the World Cup, you know, or if they get called up to the World Cup. So they create all these different tournaments and all these different. Because uh, I know, you know, I was talking about um, on Beijing Reds. TV, they were bringing up, oh, like, you know, what's going on? Is there anyone in involved in any, like, real competitions? And I'm like, oh, yeah, notably, Japan has a qualifier that, you know, they have, they have um, uh, their qualifier for the um, for the Asian 
con um, conference confederation. And I was saying how, you know, here in America, we were dealing with the Nations League tournament, which is a FIFA sanctioned tournament, you know, that's an important quote unquote tournament to win. You actually get silverware for it. So, uh, but it is a relatively new tournament now. So, I mean, like a lot of these players, I, I, albeit we don't have Liverpool players playing for U.S. or for Mexico, you know, um, but there are players, for instance, that were playing for, um, you know, West Ham or, you know, players playing for other clubs in, in England that had that were playing for, let's say, Jamaica, you know, or maybe even um, or I don't know if any players play for Canada oh. in the Prem. But yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, oh, me? Oh, I thought you were about to. I thought you were interject something. Okay. <clears throat> no, no, sorry. no. I was, I was just going to say that. I yeah, I was just uh, thinking that there, there is um. Is there not a guy? A forest? Is it forest? Oh man, we we were looking at him the other day. He has a really weird name. He has mm. a really funny name, and he plays. He's he's at forest, and he's Canadian. Oh, oh, okay. Young kid, young striker. He's got a really funny name. It's like okay. you know, like you know, on old video games when they used to make up, uh, they couldn't use the real name, so they'd make mm -hmm. up a name. Uh, mm -hmm. They used to make up like Brazilian players' names, so they give mm -hmm. those funny kind of you know Webblerson kind of name, you know Werbison, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. It's something mm -hmm. like that. It just sounds like one of them. I just thought it was funny, and then I looked him up, and he's Canadian. Um, but I think he's, uh, um, and he might've gone out on loan, but yeah, there, there's not a lot like with, with the world cup, like, you know, Infantino wanted a world cup every two years, uh, right. men's yeah. uh, senior world cup. And they've just go. done that to the under seven. I think this told you this, this, is this who you're talking about? No, no, that's not no? it. Um, okay. but if you look at it with um basically like quick quick uh breakdown on it is you uh, fifa won a world cup every two years because uh, a world cup is basically pure profit to fifa basically you, right. you have to host if you're a country you have to pay to host right and if you think mm -hmm. about it the deal that fifa gives you is everything that's sold within a stadium and within the stadium grounds outside of fishery grounds from uh beer to merchandise all that money goes to fifa all the ticket sales that all that money goes to fifa everything match day revenue for every game that all goes to fifa all of the sponsorship all that money goes to fifa right so right basically every penny that's spent on football at world cups in that country goes to FIFA. The country has to pay all the cost of building the stadiums and everything else. The only money that the country makes is the publicity, basically, and tourism money. And FIFA not only gets that, but part of FIFA's deal is that they get that money tax free, right? So can you imagine right. all the sponsorship, all that, like the, in a country like Brazil, all that money goes to FIFA. Not none of it goes to the Brazilian, you know, FA or anything like that. And all the money they have to set out on it. So now you can understand why FIFA would want to work up every two years. Sure, sure. It, yeah. And because it's basically, when you think about it, UEFA has a Champions League. Apart from kind of rolling sponsorships, it's the only thing they actually, it's their only tournament. The World Cup is FIFA's only tournament, apart from like the Club World Cup one off game stuff. So it's the only thing right. they do make money. So, you know, they are huge, but it's actually their only, their one thing. And they make billions from it. Right. And they make a tax. And it's tax Can you imagine yeah, writing that deal up for someone else? And say, Here, here's the deal, right? You, you get to do this. You pay me to do it. I make all the right. money from the bar, all the money from the tickets, all the money from the merchandise, <laughs> all the money from the sponsorships. You have to pay right. for the venue. And right. basically, the only money you make is from people coming to the gig and staying in hotels around the stadium. Right. That's your gig as a promoter. That's my offer to you as a promoter. Oh, and by the way, I get a tax free. Yep. Yeah. Would you take that deal as a promoter for an artist? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Come on, man. 
And then, so this yeah. is FIFA just rolling it down, going, if you want to call it the World Cup, then we get all the money. Yeah. It's, yep. and then they demand what stadiums you have to build and all of that. So they want one of them every yeah. two years. How, how, yeah, how they're built too. Like, as in, like, you know, in the sense of like what, what type of, what, what size capacity. you have to be, what, so the yeah, capacity. capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All of that. Mm-hmm. It's such a cartel. It's, it needs to be, FIFA needs to be ripped up. You know, I'm not one of these goes in for oh, this, this needs to stop, but you know, people just come out with oh, this needs to stop and they never say, you know, what, how or why, you know, what to mm-hmm. do. But FIFA mm-hmm. needs to be dismantled somehow and built back into a a not for profit in or whatever it is, you know, <clears throat> because it's yeah. just become completely muddled. But it's global. So that's like saying, Oh, corruption in the world needs to end. Because the new one would just become just as corrupt. So, hey, these these are the guys in charge. So, good luck with football. Yeah. Um, as a former FIFA employee, I would say like, uh, I will I will nominate myself to uh, to come back and 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 inspire the change for the righteous righteous change. I guess <laughs> you know. Well, new FIFA, sure yeah, new FIFA president. <laughs> there, 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 yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Some people call me a politician. I'll be a politician for that. How about that? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, but why not, bro? Because when you look at football, it's going downhill. Let's not kid ourselves there. You know, um, mm-hmm. like even the older generations, they can see this new generation that football is coming in, and us fans are not really doing anything about it. We just jumping mm-hmm. on the bandwagon, you know. And mm-hmm. for me, I think the real football fans need to sort of get a grip. Of the football situation, you know, I think playing the World Cup every two years, not for me, you know, it's yeah. special. It takes the specialness away for being it four yeah. years. You wait for it, and it's sort of a special event. So, all that money making side of it is sort of destroying the game. Yeah, yeah, it has. It has really put a different. I mean, like you have a different uh, slant on a lot of the like the the direction of where. Like it's supposed to be about like country. It's supposed to be about the the pride of possibly getting to the World Cup and everything else, and to the you know representing your nation. And yet, you know, like some of these. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that are going on with 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 uh, with how you get there and how just as Brian put it with the FIFA, how FIFA can you know basically say to them, hey, we're gonna make we're gonna make whatever we want from this 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 uh, this tournament or these games. And then we'll tell you what you can make, basically, in essence, yep. you know, as to um, to how it goes down. I, I was looking for I was looking for your um, for the player that you're talking about, Brian. I don't see I don't see a Canadian player on Forest actually. By the way, um, Canada's got three players that play in the in England. Or they out of they've got wait one three three four five six seven eight they got nine players technically that play in England, but um one plays for Sheffield United, um that's uh Jetson, that's uh, the Jetson. guy Jefferson Jefferson yeah Jefferson Je- Je- oh he Jefferson, plays for Sheffield yeah. United is it no no okay Jefferson yeah that's the guy sounds like a football manager regen of a Brazilian player Jefferson. Oh, okay. it's Sheffield yeah, okay. United. It's, it's, okay, I yeah, thought it was Sheffield hard. United. Awesome. Yeah, he plays Sheffield yeah. United, yeah. and then there's a McGill plays for Brighton, and then but there you go. The were the the Fagarolas, the Fagarola, the I'm not going to say that again. I don't, I don't oh, know. How, anyway, yeah, that's a name that might get me in trouble. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Uh, plays for Fulham. Um. Uh, McToy was saying Asian Cup and African Nation Cups are biannual. Don't understand why they are not every four years. That's a, that's a very good question. I mean, like, it makes it yeah. difficult for for you when you do involve those th- players that are from, and chances are they're going to be from a nation that, um, they're going to be from a nation that, if they're playing the Premier League, but, chances are they're going to be from a nation that actually is competing in, you know, in the um, yeah. African Cup. Which is good, so, which is good, you know, the fact that you have um, powerful African nations in football, like the Africans, Na- African Nations Cup is a lot older than uh, most people realize it is. It's been 
it is what it is. It's always been played when it's been played for reasons. Before mm. all the you know the African players were were big in Europe, so if you know so put it to me, that's our mm. this is our continent. This is our tournament. This is always mm -hmm. the way it's been played. And if European countries want to benefit from uh, the the best African players in the world, then they should respect our tournaments and when they are. That's the best mm -hmm. way I can put it. Like that is the African Nations Cup for me is for. I'm not going to go strong on this, oh. but it has quite a little bit how recently how that tournament has come to be seen as an inconvenience. For big mm -hmm. teams in Europe, and I think oh yeah, the most notably the the comments the they got they got Jurgen in trouble yeah. at least. Yeah, you know, why why yeah. why are we having this stupid tournament in Africa when because oh you care like cop the hell on the only reason you care about this is because Mo Salah and Mane play for us now. That's the only reason you care. Mm -hmm. These people, not mm -hmm. not saying you, but to some of the comments back then. So that tournament is older than most of the people making those comments. And it's part of their heritage, their culture, their football. You know, so they, 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 those players want to win that tournament more than anything. So, yeah, it really has kind of disgusted me a little bit the way some fans have started to look at that. As, oh, mm. they should get rid mm. of that because we have a good African. Yeah, player. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, oh. I, I, yeah, that's 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 way too far. As in, like, you have to be, re you have to, you know, really respect. The fact that, like you know, respect football exists anyone. outside of football respect exists outside that, of yeah. England, much less outside of Europe as well. You know, exactly. It's and, all these. They come from these countries, and this tournament means as much to them as it would to Messi to win a World Cup or Bobby Charlton to bring the World Cup home to England. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's all part of the fabric of it. If it was a new tournament that was invented last year, yes, then you can have a conversation. But that's not what this this is for me, you know. Yeah, we we need to respect the global game and the competitions that these people that meet in most of their countries, not just mm -hmm. be Eurocentric about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, I was going to bring this up too because it was an interesting question. It says like Lee Whiskey says he doesn't understand how we have England, Scotland. Well, uh, or has have an English, Scottish, and Welsh team, none of which are so sovereign states, um, and even Northern Ireland uh, involved in that. Uh, he says serious international tournaments should respect the seasons of the clubs, their players, and th that they come from. Um, no, no, they shouldn't. And that's they a should tough they? one. That's a tough one because there's so many different players from so many different countries that play in play no. in England and play in Europe. That like it's. It's one of those things where, like, who who has who has the who has the right who has the the the, the real rights I guess you could say the rights to to utilize this player as a participant in their games and it's 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 a difficult and, and it's a touchy yeah. subject to get into. I don't want to say get into it really, yeah. but it's, it is a very touchy subject to say whether you know the club has more say no, over the player most of the international player. No, when a club buys a player that plays for an international country, mm -hmm. this is, this isn't, none of this is new. When mm -hmm. you buy a player, he plays internationally. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And he is saying yeah. serious international tournaments should respect the seasons the club state players come from. No, why? Why should they change? The international tournaments have always happened when they happen. And you're well, suggesting say, that that yeah. isn't a serious. It, would, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be realistic because then you would have to change. You can't. You, you would always be changing. No, the you wouldn't be able yeah. to get a, a concrete yeah. schedule. That's what I'm trying to say. A, a somewhat concrete yeah. schedule. If you're trying to, you know, accommodate every player that's playing abroad in other that happens to be yeah. from a country. Don't buy African players. Don't buy African players then that are likely to go to the Africa. Yeah, you know no, when I it's happening. Say, it's on the yeah, it's on no. the calendar. They're they, they're posted up four years in advance. So right. if it's that much of a problem for you, then blame your club for buying African players and loading up on African players. So you're five, you're three short. You know, it's these tournaments. I you know, like we keep saying, there's only 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, no, no. 
Yeah. Um, Philip says uh, he understands why Sala and Endo always want to represent their national teams in the AFCON and Asian Cups, as it's as it's where they can win an international tournament. That's certainly true too. That's certainly true. I mean, like you know, there's there's always the, the outside chance that Japan or um, and not necessarily Egypt per se, but like you know, maybe there's an outside chance that Egypt can make a, a pretty decent run. Um, but there's always that chance of 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 um, there's always that that chance, but it's not like it's not a likelihood. It's not a likelihood. Um, but I was also going to say too, what is it that what is it that you would you what else would you make? What other changes would you make or differences would you make possibly to the game? That or to the international um, relationship and the club relationship. What is something that you could possibly see or do? Uh, JK, do you have an idea? Mm -hmm. For and me, Brian, you have your idea yeah. as well. Like for me, the Nations League, scrap it. Um, play tournament football qualifications. You know, when you've got a World Cup coming up in a few years, the qualifications are enough for these guys to play in. Um, also, the odd friendly. I think if you're a host nation, you're going to end up playing friendlies anyway. But I feel the value of the players is going to get deteriorated by playing too much in, uh, football. And I think these international breaks we've had over the years, a lot of people don't really look forward to them because they miss the Premier League <laughs> euphoria and stuff. So I think this is a good way for the future of football. Look, like, the the guy mentioned in the comments about the way they're going to structure the new Champions League format. And I said to people before that um, the music and film industry is being sort of just, just destroyed, you know, in the way it's the quality has gone down. Music were uh, in the music and film industry. It's the same as football. I think they're ruining football, VAR, too many games, um, and unnecessary Going like when you go to friendlies, like you go to in the summer, you'll end up going to say Asia, you might end up in America, you know, before a season starts. Back in the days, that was like maybe they ended up in Germany for a week or something like that. But nowadays, you're everywhere, so it's a lot for the guys to handle. Uh, I think sometimes fans don't really appreciate the travel times these guys put in getting from mm -hmm. here there. It takes a lot out of you if you go on holiday, that the jet lag you get. Okay, these guys are more used to it than the average guy who don't really travel that much. But it mm -hmm. takes a toll on the guys' bodies, you know. Like the Argentinian guys or the South American guys who come just before a weekend of games, you know, they ended up playing on a Wednesday. No wonder they're not playing on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. So it does sort of, I wouldn't say hinder, it does sort of, you have to arrange it better as a club of uh, how you handle sort of situ situations and stuff. Thankfully, we've got, Brighton on Sunday, not Saturday. And I think McAllister's playing on Wednesday morning for Argentina. So yeah, that gives him I, I don't know. If he's gonna, I'm hoping he does. It's not, it's a friendly, it's in America, but um, it's a friendly. And I'm hoping that it's not going, that he gets like the kind of response or the kind of time that he did from, um, from the, the previous matchup. I can go. I'm gonna go through the rest of them too, but I'll let Brian uh, VS a say on. If you want to, uh, you know, offer a comment before I, I continue on with some of the other updates. But... Uh, just in, in terms of what can be done to improve the mm -hmm. international game and uh, like that kind of stuff. Really, go to your uh, basically what you want to do is write to your local MP or your congressman or whatever it is and tell them mm -hmm. that you're disgusted at what happened in FIFA and they need to do <laughs> something about it. Because until you change the way that decisions are made and the way that that company, if you want to call it that, is run, then mm -hmm. you can forget about getting anything other than more football or more new ideas. But, you know, like Quasi said there, leave these tournaments alone. Like, they're not an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You know, they're international tournaments. They're where some of the greatest football stories are written. You know, this is... Yeah, no, you don't get bigger than winning the World Cup. You don't get bigger in Africa than being an Afghan champion. 
you know, especially yeah. for your country that wins it for the first time. I mean, you're talking about living legends here, so these are the real parts of the game. So leave them alone and uh, just get these guys top. Get rid of them. That's really mm-hmm. it until we do something about that. They don't I, have the best interest to... of the game at all, basically. So. That's yeah, no, you, no, spot on. And we're going to talk about some of the best interests of the game too, in a bit. But I also wanted to, um, I wanted to continue on with some of these updates, or at least some of these other players, some of the other players that we had on international duty. Um, some of us did, some of us did get to watch this game. I watched it on replay, but I didn't watch it live. Um, so I remember, I think the game was on when we were live. I think. Right, I think I think it was on while we were alive because I remember I think someone was giving updates during the game or something. Mm-hmm. But but all the same, um, in, um, Netherlands played against Scotland. Uh, that was basically our um, you know I don't like red on red violence you know, but that was definitely red on red fire I guess you could say you know um, yeah because yeah, you know this is the the lineup that um, that the Netherlands went with. Uh, for instance, uh, which was kind of cool to see uh, Ginny back, you know, with um, some of his old mates. Um, and uh, it was it was nice to see see that happen because he ended up uh, Ginny actually ended up scoring. So uh, Cody Hackbo and Virgil van Dyke uh, took on Andy Robert, Robertson, Scotland in this friendly. Uh, Netherlands came out on top, winning four nothing. Uh, Hakpo set set up two of his two of the country uh, two of Netherlands goals. He was also the only player who got a bit of rest uh, coming off at the 82nd minute, which is good to see because we don't want him knackered and tired, or at least we want him in, in shape and in form, but we don't want him like you know you know basically expel uh, you know like tired and, and worn out. Um, but he looked dangerous, in my opinion. He did look dangerous. He looked very creative at times, obviously getting two assists. And um, we're all hoping that he brings that back with him. But it was it was a noticeable um, contrast in that he was playing out left. On, he was playing more, more so on the left side with mm-hmm. the attack uh, for, for the Netherlands. Um, you know, uh, that could bring up, obviously, the, the, the conversation. Uh, do you think that we're going – do you think that – um, do you think that Hackbo can bring back this form, or was this just is this basically, you know, just him being back amongst his his uh his countrymen and the sheer fact of like um maybe Cody may or excuse me maybe Cody needs a a shot at being on the left side maybe not necessarily left yeah. left mid but like maybe he does need to be give a uh, competition towards Diaz maybe on that left mm-hmm. wing. Uh, or do you think that we need to see him at striker uh, judging from his, from his thing? Do you think this is going to give, give him any, any bit of a, of a, um, any, do you think it's going to give him any abuse, bit of relief? Yeah. yeah from the yeah, abuse yeah. that he's seeing basically. Yeah. Is that, is that maybe an answer for, for, for what I'm, what, what we see is going on with Cody. JK, no, you want think- to mm-hmm. I just feel that maybe he feels like he saw he can let his hair down. <laughs> it was yeah. while he's with Holland. Like when you play for Liverpool, um, and I always say this to fans, like guys, the players have got social media, so they're going to read sort of comments that are aimed at them. Um, and I think the Liverpool way is not to jump on our players. We've never done that in history, but all of a sudden mm-hmm. in this internet era, it's like one guy will say something, and, and the other guy, yeah, I actually agree with you, and make that into an agenda. So mm-hmm. for me, there's no yeah, we can criticize Gapco. And I understand because I think in the the Man United game when he came on, he was useless. You know, and I've mm-hmm. always sort of backed Gapco. I've always said, you know what, he'll be all right and stuff. But I think in the United game, he was sort of terrible. But the game before in the Europa League, he got two goals, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he got two assists for Holland the game after. It's all about consistency mm-hmm. uh with Gapco now. He needs mm-hmm. to keep it regular, you know. You can't have two, a, a, a good game. Next game, mm-hmm. total opposite, real poor. He needs to find that right balance. There's a player in him, of course. And uh, mm-hmm. because he plays for Liverpool, we just want the best. So when he's on international duty, I wanted him to be involved, goals or assists. He plays good on the left for Holland. I've watched him a lot of times playing there. So mm-hmm. Diaz, 
when all our guys are fit, you could use Gapco on the left if you want to take mm -hmm. Diaz off. Uh, so. Yeah, I think I, I actually I actually don't mind that, and I I I'm, I sometimes question why we don't see it more often, other than maybe because of the injuries and just the the availability of what some of these players have have been you know faced with. That's maybe the mm -hmm. reason why we see what we do see when it comes to Diaz, um, or at least Hackwell not necessarily getting um, subbed in on that left side. We, we primarily saw him being subbed in as a right wing, right mid. You know, mm -hmm. occasionally being pushed into that striker role, but um, but very, but we haven't really seen him on the left wing as much as more people would like to see him. Considering a lot of people like Ensman TV friends, Ensman um, said himself how he like prefers to see and wants to see Cody on that on that side. Brian, do you think real quick? Do you think that there could be because he's had some really good form once. Uh, he's played for for Holland, and there's that. It reminds me of Pogba, for instance, where Pogba used to enjoy getting back with his national team, sometimes more so than even being a part of his club team. You know, I'm not oh, saying you're that that's what you're underselling. You're underselling that completely. You're under you're underselling that completely. Pogba oh, I, okay. was a completely yeah. different player with France. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Pogba yeah. was Pogba was the king of the castle with France. That team built around him. I mean, he compared to being a Man United, he was yeah, he was hated at Man United for a lot. He got nothing mm -hmm. but abuse at Man United most of the time. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. a reason why he had all those people out there saying he's world class. No, this guy is freaking world class because they could point to what he was doing in big games for France. Mm -hmm. And it was just this totally different player. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, sorry, I was just, but yeah, like the, the, the Pogba thing. Like if you're, I think I I know what you're going to ask me. I think just <laughs> well, if no, no, I know I don't mean like that. I, I just rather I I did cut you off. So I think no, like, I'm sorry, I don't I'm laughing at Redbird. Right 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 saying I'm being too nice yeah. of a salesperson, a salesman, or a politician yeah. in a sense or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> if if he played for if he if he played for Man United. And he was having an awful season. And he went off for mm -hmm. Holland and played, you know, scored twice against Scotland or whatever it was. You know, Man United fans were saying, oh, well, look, you know, we'd be saying, whatever. Yeah, great. He, he, he scored two in a friendly versus Scotland. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it does he come back? You know, these are unanswerable questions. Mm -hmm. Does that make, make him come back and happier and better? Maybe mm -hmm. he's not happy to come back. Maybe he's happier there. You know, maybe mm -hmm. he knows he's going to play more for Holland and play more minutes. So he'd rather be mm -hmm. off on international duty for longer. You know, mm -hmm. like you were saying, if you come, where does he play? It's the Harvey Elliott thing. Do you drop Diaz? Do you drop Nunes? Mm -hmm. If the answer to both those questions is no, then Cody Gakpo doesn't play for them. Right. He sits right. on the bench. So it's, it's up right. to you. So it's, you know, it's like, oh, because this is one of those more like that, you know, a while ago, this is what it did. Do you think, you know, Gakko? Yeah, I think Gakko will be good on the left. It's like, oh, wait, wait, do you think Nunez is trash? Or Diaz is trash? You know? Yeah. No, no, let's yeah, get it. Like, yeah, we're not, so we're what, not exactly. let's not that's open up so, the can, can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so <laughs> you're saying you want him to play. So you're saying, okay, well, you want to drop Diaz. Again, yeah, look, there'll mm -hmm. be rotation, but if everyone's fit in the big game, I don't see where he's gone and pushed himself. Like, this is Klopp now what, in... Do you think... Real quick, last, do you think... That, last, sorry, do you think mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Brian, I was going no, to say, to add it's to your last, point, though, last, your point, is it somewhat what Lee's saying, too? Is Lee's point what you're trying to... Is basically what you're saying, too, though? Could that be... He said maybe it's just playing yeah. in a favorite position combined with there being no pressure in international friendlies. You're playing in a complete all of those things. No pressure yeah. in an international friendly between being in a cup game against Man United and Old Trafford. You can't compare the mm -hmm. two things except the game right. you're playing. So if mm -hmm. this is the last ten laps of the Grand Prix, this is the home straight now for Klopp. He doesn't have mm -hmm. time for tinkering and you know, oh, I'll try this, try that. If the guys he wants to start are are, are fit up front, mm -hmm. you know, I think Gakpo is your fourth choice. So I, like I've been saying it for a while now, I think 
he's one player that will, you know, he'll love Klopp and all that, not that he wants him to leave, but he will be one that's really, uh, well, a bit trepidatious maybe, but looking forward to a new manager to come in and, and see, do I have a different role? Does he see me playing? Because I don't think Klopp does, and he doesn't have time to force his way into this team. There's less than 10 games left, 10 games left in the league. I don't see where he does it, how, you know, bar an injury. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm hoping the latter part of that is not the case. Obviously, you know, we've already seen him be injured once. Um, <clears throat> and it was uh, right after he had scored the goal, actually, um, for us. And mm-hmm. it, seemed like, it seems like ever since that moment, he's kind of like had bits and moments of like starting to find his form and then falling off, starting to find his form, falling off again. Um but he was certainly a little bit more consistent going up to that point, up to that injury. So, so yeah, I'm hoping that he can find his form and continue to have it. No, I just mean unless someone like Diaz gets injured or unless Nunes gets injured, I don't see how he gets in as a, as a first choice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just feel that. Go ahead. Go ahead, JK. Yeah. I just think, the we had five forwards going into this season, and as you've seen with the injuries and and uh, then mm-hmm. Salah went to the African Cup of Nations, and he got injured there. Um, mm-hmm. We've actually needed these guys. I think as fans, if if Dan's was starting the games where Diaz and Gakko started for us as our front three, and mm-hmm. then sometimes it's half area or someone. Um, if Dan's was starting that game and Gakko was also injured and not playing, us mm-hmm. fans would have been so worried going into them games because Gapko was there because Diaz was there we sort of said okay let's see what we can do we ended up winning all them games even though Gapko wasn't involved really as much as he could have been but Mm -hmm. I feel the pressure sometimes gets to him Mm -hmm. um sometimes pressure for some guys it's like the it's the drug they love you know when they play football the pressure some guys don't like it so when he's with Holland playing international friendlies it's more of a chilled sort of laid back sort of philosophy we're going for a league title now um and that pressure sort of gets to players sometimes you know that's why mm-hmm. those fans don't really need to get on that on their back i think gapco knows before us if he's had a bad game you exactly, know? Yeah. Mate. No, exactly, I'm, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah these guys yeah. know yeah. long before know. any of us whether they're playing well or not know. or whether they could be doing better or not they don't need i think that's why i think that's why like sometimes when you do some, I get that you want to get the the post game thoughts. You want to get get it when it's raw and and like you know and and still like vibrant in in the sense of like you know being able to get those uh, emotions out of the players and get the comments that you can you, players and even coaches. But sometimes you know it is kind of a touchy place to be when you know when when you get interviewed or you get or you're getting a, a, a microphone you know shoved in your face basically asking you questions about like, oh, you know, kind of kind of silly or, or kind of like at some points disrespectful questions at, yep. at some times, but questions that, you know, are just like just unnecessary. Comedy. They all know how they know they played bad. You don't necessarily have to you don't have to make them like reflect on that actual on them actually playing bad. And then like, well, how do you feel? What, what, what do you mean? How do I feel? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just one of those things where you're like, you know, like, how would you feel if you had a bad day at the office? You know, basically, you know, you're not, you're not happy about it. And especially when you have, you know, and then the difference is at the office, you don't have like, you know, 60,000 people, you know what I mean? On your back, you're basically yelling and chanting, chanting things at you for every decision that you've made. It's one of those things. It's, it's a difficult place to be. That's- that's the media game though isn't it that's how you get headlines that's how you create the stories that you know like you see the players they can walk through those mix zones with their head down and not talk to anybody but then you see the other players who stop and talk some of them play the game mm-hmm. some of the like more clever players they'll be known for the guys that work maybe more in the media now will be known for always stopping and always having a word for a journey. You know, even if the game wasn't great, you know, they'd always stop. Whereas there's some players that would be famous for like, they have that mix zone afterwards where they walk through the journalists and they can stop and talk to them if they want. 
but they don't mm. have to. It's kind of barricaded off. Like it's like at the Oscars, right. you know, when they're walking past on the red carpet, they can choose mm. to stop, but if they want to just walk past, they can't. Yeah. And they have yeah. a lot of these players, they're famous, they'll have the headphones on, the head down, the hood up, and they'll just walk past everyone. Or like especially if he's at a bad game. Where you'd get those guys like the companies or walkers, these these guys, they have their eye ten years in the future. And so they'll always stop and have a word, you know, make sure to keep in good with some of the journalists, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> sorry, but mm-hmm. that, yeah, they, they, they know, how, they know how important it is because mm-hmm. it's like, if you're really good to them, they're less likely to write Ask that story you about you. Yeah. Right, bullshit. Or, right. But write yeah. that bad story about you. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. Leroy Sané, say for instance, Leroy Sané mm-hmm. never stopped in the mix zone. Always. Like journalists are touchy bastards, by the way. Mm-hmm. You know, if no, they ignore well, they, them and that kind of stuff, they, they can get, yeah. no, those tabloid guys, those English, I mean, oh, the higher oh, up okay. guys, the guys who shouldn't be, like the guys who should have more sense, they will be the ones in the next day writing these bitchy stories about these guys because they don't talk to them, they don't give them interviews. But the guy that always stops and it always has a word, oh, he's the best, he's great, you know. You know, don't write that thing about his wife. You know, don't, Dan, or don't, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Oh, that Mormon fella always hated him. Never, never gave me an interview. Never gave me an interview. That's, and it's not the young guys trying to make it. It's the guys that actually have power that write the story the next day. The editors, they're the ones that can be really petty. It's the English tabloid media, seriously, man. Room 101, that's the first thing. English <laughs> football tabloid media. Don't pure tease poison. Don't tease. Don't give the spoilers, man. We haven't, we haven't, uh, with the room 101. That'll be definitely, that'll be some fun, fun stuff. <laughs> Did you read the piece? That guy who wrote, he's, um, I think he's, I'm not sure if he's a Manchester journalist or a Liverpool journalist, but I'll try to find the piece where he actually disses Jurgen Klopp real bad. And I was really surprised they allowed him to print what he was writing, you know, it was. Mm. In a way, we can't wait. He's going, you know, like these sort of comments and stuff like that. And uh, because of Klopp's sort of passion on the sidelines, the way he handles referees and stuff like this, um, they were like saying that he's sort of a bad image uh, for the Premier League. And I was like, God help me here. Mm -hmm. Klopp brings passion to the game. He's brought passion to the Premier League. If it weren't for Klopp, Man City would have won everything. Okay. It would have been boring as hell. You know, mm-hmm. Liverpool added some spice to the last 10 years of the Premier League. You can't say nothing mm-hmm. else about it, you know. But these yeah. journalists, yeah, these journalists, if they don't sort of like you, mm-hmm. um, if you communicate with them, they're, they're all good. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're always going to them. Oh, Kyle Walker's a top lad. He always comes over. This sort of bullshit, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that guy, Mr. Klopp, must have wind this guy up to write that piece. But I'll, I'll, I'll find it for you guys. Let me get through these. I'm going to get through these updates on the rest of the players. And we have some great comments being uh, brought in by the chat. I wanted to bring up those before yeah. I get into our final topic of the day. Um, so, uh, again, we were speaking. World. Yeah, from around the world. Here's your news. We need to get, we need to get some, some sound effects being just. You know what? You know, I, I think I'm thinking that your, I might. On your yeah, we might. Just, yeah. We might That'd go cool. through. Uh, what I'm thinking of doing maybe is like giving up my stream yard and going more through um, OBS. I have an actual soundboard on my OBS uh, format, but I don't have one on. Mm-hmm. They don't give you that option on StreamYard. Yeah. So, so yeah, <clears throat> I'm thinking about that. And StreamYard hears me. Maybe they'll make a difference, but who knows? Anyways. Uh, Let's go into our updates around the world, and then then we'll get into some of these great comments from the chat. Uh, Luis Diaz assisted Colombia's goal uh, to put them past Spain, one nothing. Um, in Crystal another friendly, Palace. Crystal Palace guy scored it, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah. He's the and right. He's the right wing nice back. Crystal Palace. No, I was gonna say what, what was nice about it, Brian was that. It wasn't in Colombia, and it wasn't even in Spain. It was in London. It was, was in London. Yeah, I knew that. Actually. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. That, that was that Tottenham. Yeah, that at Tottenham Stadium. Stadium. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's 
Yeah, Tom. That's cool. I don't, that, that, that's, that, that works out. That's cool. At least you're not flying to Colombia. <clears throat> I mean, Spain's not that 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 um, much of a of a of a travel you know accommodation that you have to make for for yourself. But like, as in, at least we're not seeing these players travel to Colombia um, for for the match. <clears throat> Excuse me. No reason. Um, for friendly. No reason at all to go there for friends. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Alexi McAllister it was in North America, as I mentioned earlier. He played 25 minutes in Argentina's three nothing win against El Salvador. Um, Connor Bradley put in 90 minutes for Northern Ireland in their one one draw against Romania. Uh, uh, Costa yeah. Simicas got the start and played the full 90. Again, I don't like hearing these guys playing full 90s in these friendlies, but all the same, uh, played the full 90 minutes as he proved, uh, provided, excuse me, an assist in Greece's 5 nothing win over Kazakhstan in Euro uh, 2024 qualifying. Um, okay, that, was a, that wasn't a friendly, that was actual actual qualifier. So then there was two players then, there was two players then that actually had to part, partake in qualifiers. I thought it was only one. Uh, he typically plays, always plays well when he plays on the um, plays with Greece. Uh, Simicast does. Uh, finally, Harvey Elliott notched two goals for the um, England U21s in their 5-1 U21 Euro qualifier against Azerbaijan. And um, I shouldn't say finally, but I should also say even more so uh, as um, as far as uh, Kelleher. Um, had a match as well. The Republic of Ireland uh, played a friendly against Belgium, and he had his, uh, he had a clean sheet uh, all the way up through 62 minutes. And uh, we have Joe Gomez as England and um, Canate's France. France is going to be playing as well. But um, I think I got all of them. Oh, Tyler Morton uh, got an assist, which was really good to see. Uh, he's out on loan, obviously, for Hull City. But uh, he got uh, his first goal, or, uh, Tyler. He got his first goal came from, um, wait one second, I'm sorry. Uh, seven is last five, you in front, and he's reigns, keep his side. Notably, okay, oh, Tyler Morton got the assist, excuse me. I got. It. I had to make sure I got that all correct. Because, uh, yeah, he got the goal, but Tyler Morton got an assist, actually, to, um, to Harvey Elliott as well. But Harvey Elliott ended up playing 75 minutes and was um, for that game. Um, I wanted to get into these, uh, into these, into these chat, uh, comments and it was kind of interesting. Um, this one was a really interesting, um, comment. Five players have not, have, have, have not missed a game due to injury in 2023, 2024. Those five players, did you, I don't know. Did you guys see the answer already, Brian and JK? Yeah. In the chat. Oh, you yep. both did? Okay. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you if you had, and I, was, I would ask you if you knew who we were. But it says, uh, Hyler goes on to say, those five players are Adrian, Roger Van Dyke, Kwanzaa, Elliot, and Diaz. Diaz has not missed a game, uh, due to injury at least. Um, and then he goes on to say, um, he goes on to say, uh, oh, about the fixture list as well. He brought up this point, which is kind of interesting. The fixture list has been has been put out, and it seems like at the end of the season, Liverpool will be playing Everton on the evening of Wednesday, April 24th, before then traveling to West Ham for a Saturday. Saturday. Let me repeat this, people. For a Saturday 12 freaking 30 kickoff. I don't, I don't like if I don't even know if, it, if writing. Your uh, your local politician is going to make any of a difference for this stuff at times. No, that's where we called it though. That's where we called it because in the mm -hmm. Wednesday in that week, because yeah. that game was up until now that Everton game was mm -hmm. floating around the fixture list because it hadn't been assigned, right. mm -hmm. and that was like for those people who know and to go into this stuff again because it's a bit of a thing in fantasy football they can the, the spreadsheets up there that will uh, that they're up there like uh two weeks ago they said there's only two spots right there's only two right. possible slots it's either going here or it's going there mm -hmm. you know it's like it oh it's not been reassigned yet but you can basically it's going to be one of these two spots mm -hmm. so that was mm -hmm. always going to be a midweek 
they were always going to do it that way. We were always going to, but you know, such is the price of success. You know, if you go far in cup in cup competitions, you go far in Europe. I mean, it's it's unavoidable. It really is. There's, there's not a lot you can do about it. The, the West Ham game, the twelve thirty on the Saturday, they'll probably link that to the next game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, look, they're, they're just—I don't really know what to, what can you say about this. You know, mm-hmm. this is—we've done this now. We did it like we're in all four two years ago. We've been doing this now for years, especially and under clock. We've been going deep in in competitions. In competitions, and when right. we get to this end yeah. of the season, this is what happens. Games, you know, and the managers say, "Oh, it's games every three days now." Yeah. You know, they know no. before Christmas. It's yeah, and we, we JK's talking about earlier on the amount of recurring sort of hamstring type injuries that you're seeing. So mm-hmm. it doesn't take much to put two and two together. But if you can come through these no. games Yeah, you'd be lucky to come through all a, a run like that. Mm-hmm. A run like that. No, guy. I just mean a run like that. Yeah, a run like that. Uh every couple of days per week the idea that you come through that without someone getting a knock or someone doing something you know right right and one of them being a mercy play derby mm-hmm. so and even if we were even if we were to be out with the other thing we're, we're it would only be two extra games you know so mm-hmm. so it says like uh, Heiler, yeah Heiler said that um he says incredibly LFC can play on the su- on the Sunday, but it will only be moved to April 28th if Arsenal progress to the Champions League semifinal. Yeah. Broadcasters, mm-hmm. as usual, just um, dictating far too much in his opinion. Yeah, yeah Arsenal has been affected as well. Yeah, that's that's a, that's interesting that Arsenal game can end up affecting whether where and when we play these games and such. You know, so um, and that's a, that's a situation where like I don't necessarily know if I want to. I don't necessarily know if I want to say that I want to see see our, which which is the which is the bigger bigger L for us us playing that twelve thirty game on Saturday and not having it pushed back, or or is it a bigger L of seeing Arsenal move on in the Champions League? <laughs> That would be a little bit of a, a double double edged sword for all of us, I think. Nah, I can yeah, see Bayern doing them over two yeah. games. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, this is why EPL should have their own streaming platform. That'd be very interesting. If they ever thought about doing that, that'd be very, very interesting how they how they would go about doing that. Like in America, we have like the NFL network. For instance, or um, an NFL network, where there's the NBA. The, the NBA has their own network. The NFL have their own network, and um, there's uh, NFL. The NFL um, created created a Thursday game, basically, pretty much created a Thursday game. Um, in that, um, it was now like those. It was kind of a game also that they could throw in as a as a game to a Thursday game, so that you can kind of like get the games that had to be postponed or, or moved around or whatever it had to be. And um, yeah, the NFL network ends up, there's some games that only are held, the rights are only held by the NFL now, even despite there being broadcast companies that broadcast the NFL games. It's kind of a weird research circumstances. So, but it's kind of like them Taking a little bit more control and at least getting a little bit, a little bit of a, a handle on on some of their own games. But if they end up getting their own games, like like um, if they end up creating in that situation, which is what Quasi was saying, it does bring up the circumstances of saying, okay, well, you still have to broadcast those. You still have to broadcast those games. So now that's money that you're not getting paid by those other comp- by those broadcasting companies to broadcast your games. You're it's a little bit of a, a circumstances, so it'd be interesting well, they, how that goes. And then you have to solidify your own advertising as well, too. Go ahead, Brian. They don't. They 
they would if yeah there's a couple of reasons uh one of them would be one which people don't care about but they have to spread the money down they've just signed up mm -hmm. to a new deal for that the money goes down to the all four leagues now i know there's some people mm -hmm. out there that will say they should keep all the money to themselves why are they giving money to stockport basically um mm -hmm. but the money that comes in gets uh and nothing goes to some clubs basically at the end but it gets all the way down through the football pyramid because those mm -hmm. clubs are the ones you send your players on loan to you know mm -hmm. so it all goes into help so it's all up to one big pot and it's not really it's just a different way of doing it they don't look at it as how can i make as much money for myself individually don't get me wrong a lot of the owners mm -hmm. that come in and say can we not do this no mm -hmm. like you had that in in spain where uh barcelona and real madrid were basically doing that but it, they were just getting most of the money from the deal whereas now right. it's spread out more even which is so yeah. everyone gets their fair share of the pie like these clubs make enough freaking money as it is and right. then secondly it's because they would they wouldn't make as much from individually streaming as right. they get from yeah the, the the billion and billions and billions that they get from tv now they'd actually right. make less exactly. just by selling their own individual tv rights so yep. it's worth more to them to get this thing like they want to keep more of it but they don't like the fact that they have to give it down but that's what you've signed up to that's the league system yeah you know yeah. if you don't have these smaller clubs and strong leagues then you don't have good players coming up through, the, through those leagues you know it all has to sustain itself mm -hmm. so they'll never have their own individual yeah. streaming rights you know well, i was just going to say also they're, they're a league they're... Mm -hmm. yeah maybe selling it abroad or something like you know even selling like abroad i mean like, i was going to say i was just going to say though that if you do create like an EPL TV, EPL TV or whatever, you know, or something like that, you know, um, uh, or, you know, Premier League TV uh, station. Guess what? That means that now you're going into the, into the, like, into the TV business in essence, you know? So that means that now yeah. you're going to have to, <clears throat> you're going to have to buy studios. You're going to have to, you know, have commentators and you're going to have to have, you know, you're going to have your own network, you know, that is separate from your actual everyday office, you know, dealings of what the Premier League deals with, you know, they have their own situation, but then they'd have to have a offset for just the actual network, the television network branch of the Premier League, you know, and that's, and that's it's a, that's a there. very big, big, it's plug and uh, play. big, yeah, it's plug and play. the network, yeah. yeah, it's plug and play, the networks are their farm, the TV is their farm exactly all of that yeah. you know like it's they don't have to set up yet their own independent all of that like um i think quasi is saying they'll make more money i think quasi is massively overestimating how many people would actually pay to watch all the liverpool yeah. games live yeah. and the difference in when you look at how much it costs over here and in england what you're forced right. to pay is what they want you to pay they want you. I'm just to watch Liverpool games. I will be forced to pay over a thousand a year for the full mm -hmm. Sky and BT package, twelve hundred. That's, that's what that's they incredible, want. To pay. The they don't want you to buy it. Yeah. But yeah, so that's what the price is here. Like, there's no data at all that tells you that Liverpool Football Club individually selling their matches live to and putting them would make them more money than the hundreds and hundreds of millions that they get from mm -hmm. the TV deals now, the rights deals. It's all set up for them, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I know, like I say, quasi, that's not really how it works, man. Um, because you're we're getting the secondary part. They've signed up, they've signed up to a joint package where all the money gets put in equally and spread out amongst the four leagues. And that's how it should be in England. That's how it should work. So if you want to argue against that, that's different. Where one club just gets to take all its own money, but there's a different system in it where all the money comes in and it gets mm -hmm. spread out. So you can't do individual rights. It's not on the table. So, so this is you know, yeah, no. Um, 
I, it, it, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of other things that I think get involved in that, in how and why you don't want to, because I mean, as for, I'm just going to say for it, for instance, ESPN, ESPN is a world entity. You know, I know that, you know, different entities cover different sports and such, but for instance, um, they cover the, they cover the FA cup, for instance, here in America, if I want to watch the FA cup, I have to watch through ESPN. They have all the games and they have, and I believe they have the league. I think they have the league cup too. So they have like the league cup and the FA cup are covered by ESPN, you know? So, you know, um, and then the premier league is covered by NBC or by Paramount. I think not Paramount, no NBC, NBC, excuse me, because Paramount CBS. So NBC covers that. So a lot of times with these, these, these uh, companies, these like, you know, broadcasting companies, they need content. So they need, they want to have content. So like, as in to help broaden the reach and, uh, and actually help uh, bring in customers, they, the reason why they do pick up like, or reason why ESPN does pick up the FA Cup or why they do pick up, you know, these other competitions or the, these other events or such, you know, they, it's because they need to fill their air, their airtime with content, you know, and they want to provide it with the, with the more popular content. So that's, that's why, you know, they end up being the middleman on bringing you it. But then again, also ESPN has the commentators, they have the, they have the infrastructure, you know, already set up. And that's just something that you don't have to worry about. They have the brick and mortar, you know, that again, that you don't have to worry about setting up yourself, you know, and I think that's the reason why we haven't seen that elevation of the game go to what Quasi and you got and Brian were just discussing. There is one last part of this because I'm going to be um, bringing this plane. We're, we're starting the cruise down towards the air, towards the airport. I can see it in the in the horizon. And there's something I wanted to bring up. I know that I know that. Um, I might be the only U.S. men's national team uh, supporter oh, yeah, here. Cool. Yeah, I was interested yeah. to hear this. I, did, I didn't know anything about this, so I'm interested to know what this is all about because it's a whole new um, uh, issue to me. I didn't know this was. Yeah, a thing. it's a major, major issue, Brian. It's something I really wanted. It's something I really wanted to bring uh, to to the attention of people, you know, out there because I know that we're all, you know, we're seeing what um, how fans can react and how fans can sometimes get, you know, a little bit um, rambunctious with the things and, and um, that they might say or the actions that they might perform on the pitch. But again, um, big up to Tyler Adams, um, scored our first, scored the winning goal technically because we ended up winning this game 2 nothing against our, our like really big, you talk about our rival, Mexico is our rival, okay? And especially as of late, you know, as the game has started to really, really take form and shape in America, um, U.S. U.S. men's national team has always had to look up at Mexico as being the the king of the hill type, uh, you know, candidate. And we've taken them down, and we've you know surmounted uh, the, that crown for the U.S. men's national or for U.S. soccer, at least for international, but. Um, but yes, Mexico has always been our dreaded foe, and we beat them. <clears throat> excuse me, in the Concacaf National League Championship, uh, or or not championship, but uh, the National League uh, tournament. And now we are the champions three times in a row. By the way, so for El Tri, that's what they're called. At least that's Mexico's uh, version of it, um, of their of their name. That's like their nickname for their team. Um, we can say we have um, El Tri. L tree net nation league cups, which does not play well against um for Mexico. Actually, I think I want to say that the last time we won this tournament was that ended up being the reason why they fired the coach for Mexico. Actually, that's how big this game or how big our rivalry is and how important, at least in Mexico, it's incredibly like that is incredibly big. Um soccer's and or football is incredibly big. But the reason why I wanted to bring attention to this was because of this right here. Let me make sure I uh, make it big enough for you guys to kind of see what was going on. So during this game, game was suspended 
the game was actually suspended. I'll, I'll read to you kind of what I wrote down as my own notes as well, is that the game was actually suspended in the late stages. In, um, and this is the second straight year this has happened, okay, because of homophobic chants by pro-Mexican fans in, 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 the, in the stadium. So they do this chant for every time the for every time the ball, every time we get a goal kick or something like that, anytime the ball goes out, or especially just the goal kicks, they do this homophobic chant. And what was crappy about it is for the first time, okay, so the first time they they do it, or when they're they're doing it for a good majority of the game, too, by the way. And the referee was allowing for it to continue and go on and go on because he, he they, we were we're up to nothing. He didn't want to make this be the issue or be the be a, a deterrent or be a headline in the game. But it ended up being it anyway, because um, uh, the referee was Drew Fisher. Uh, uh, he's a Canadian. Um, he stopped the play in the 80th minute of um, of the second half. We were up to nothing. Okay, again, there was about sixty thousand um, fans in the in attendance at the AT and T Stadium in in Dallas. Um, Play resumed because what they do is they do this thing where they stop it for the first first time they stop it. They make an announcement. And then what they do is they the second time, if it continues, the second time they'll stop play and they'll they, they can tell the, the team to go into the locker room. OK, while they sort things out. And then the third time, if it happens, so it's basically like a three strikes, three strikes you're out type thing. If it third time it happens, they call the match. Okay, they call the match, and it's actually happened, and this has happened before too, between USA and Mexico. They've actually in, in a game where we were, I believe it happened in, I want to say it happened in the match that we had in Vegas. We had a a game against them in Las Vegas, and that got ugly too, as well. It got really, really ugly. What, what do they call and, it? Do they call it one nil or three nil? Because over here, we, if a match gets abandoned, if in Italy and in England, I think if a match gets abandoned for like for something like that, right? Oh, I got like, you. Yeah, it maybe it was like nil nil. What happens? Yeah. yeah. Is it like it a is it like a forfeit? What's the forfeit rule? That's a good question. No, I no, I, yeah, out. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They put it down as a treat, like in the league. So, like, it's a pu extra punishment. So, like, on your goes on your goal difference is three you nil know, as well. Yeah, you know, I think they don't it, just I think call it, it a win and call it one nil. Yeah, that's usually right. what they do. You see, because it's mm -hmm. like an extra punishment. Because if it's in a, a kind of a group stage or anything like that, it would this also count final. on your goal difference. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, and this yeah, is, it would if you're in yeah. the league or something like that. It would, it would add up to kind of at the end of the season. It, yep. might actually, it might come down to that as well. So, Well, I mean, like, you know, we've been talking about, I think, VAR, for instance, like we've seen VAR, how it, it, the stop and play, stop and go, stop and go play has been detrimental, I think, to some of the the um, some of the hamstring injuries that we're seeing, you know, because you're because like it's kind of like they're not your your the break is a little bit too long sometimes for for some of these decisions that have to be made. Um, and albeit you want to get to the right decision. So I'm not I'm not criticizing that. But. You know, having all these bar decisions ends up being these breaks, but they literally stopped the game in the 88th minute. And it's one of those things where it's like, and we were actually really doing well against them at that time. We were pressing again to possibly score. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're taking this break. Mexico's able to kind of like get their breath, you know, kind of like take a minute to like, you know, like um, get directions from the coach and like all this mm -hmm. different, it was almost like a timeout in a yeah. sense. You know, and I'm like, I was like, I'm like, what the, like, this is pathetic that we're at this place in point in the game that this is what's going on, you know? And mm -hmm. what was even worse about it is the crowd got even, it got emboldened by, by the, by the threats that were placed on. This is, this is actually, you're seeing, uh, this is at, again, this is at AT&T Stadium. Uh, AT&T Stadium has, I think the largest, um, the largest, you know, it's Texas. So everything's got to be big, you know, everything's bigger in Texas, as they say. So they had like the largest, um, uh, uh, screen in, in the world, I think, you know? So 
it was one of those situations where it emboldened the crowd, it seemed like, to act even more um, unruly to the point where fans, but there, you, you saw Mexican fans throwing bottles. And like, as when we scored the second goal, it looked like, it looked like, like people were trying to, it looked like it was like a, a garbage, like the field was just going to be a garbage dump in a sense of how many bottles, obviously, ho thankfully the bottles are plastic and not, um, you know, glass or metal, but all the same plastic still hurts if you get hit by it, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you have like something in it, if there's actual like, you know, Wait, water yeah. or whatever in it. Um, and, and who knows what else could be in there. Um, but, that's what's that what was happening. And it's like one of those situations where I'm just like, this the game has to develop beyond this and maybe even go even further to the point where not only are these some of these fans being um ejected, but also being banned from possibly participating in this in in some of these games or in these in these competitions or in these in these games in general for the for these for at least for the international cases cases being banned mm -hmm. from actually being a, being a national band, not just like, oh, you're banned from AT&T Stadium. I mean, banned from going to see Mexico play in, um, be, going to see Mexico play in America, at least, you know. Um, the World Cup's coming um, as well, yeah. What's that? The World Cup's coming to America, Mexico, and Canada. And Mexico, yeah. So oh, yeah. if these guys are messing about now and they're not allowed to go to games, it's their loss, you know. Uh, I think these oh, guys... Oh, it's going to get, it will get guys. ugly. It will get mm -hmm. ugly. Look, I'm trying to get across that. Like, as I know that someone could easily say, oh, well, you're an American fan. Obviously, you're going to have a, a Mexican bias or, you know, and all and, and for um, my fellow Mexico, Mexican Americans out there or people in Mexico that do watch this channel. You know, it's not necessarily that I'm trying to trying to uh, put you in a bad light because there are good Mexican fans out there, obviously. But this is not a good look. It just isn't. It's not a good look for the game. It's not a good look for for the safety of the players. It's not a good look for the sheer fact that we're going to be hosting this tournament, the World Cup tournament, you know, in a couple of years, as you just said. You know, um, it was really, really bad. Um, CONCACAF put out a statement. It says CONCACAF condemns the discriminatory, discriminatory chanting. Um, uh, they say the security staff in the stadium identified and ejected a significant number of fans and the referee and match officials of activated the FIFA protocol because um, there is a protocol again like I said there's a three three step protocol for FIFA that they put in together it is extremely disappointing that this matter continues to be an issue at some matches um this was unfortunate because we really re we really want a really competitive game we want a really great atmosphere but we don't want to get things thrown at us that's what uh, Craig Bolthalter went on to go say excuse me um and it's something where, like, again, it happened at uh, Legion Stadium in Las Vegas where uh, the referee, the Salvadorian referee, had to stop it with 12 minutes. He had to stop in the eighth minute of uh, – we had 12 minutes of, 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 of stoppage time. We're up 3 nothing at the time. And it just gets worse. It absolutely gets worse. And it's where the point where, like, you know, um, you know, I get your – CONCACAF, for instance, is going to strongly condemn these, these kind of chants and everything else. But they didn't go as far as to say the regional governing body are going to announce any disciplinary actions because they've done it before. And again, this isn't the first time the uh, the Mexican Federal F Football Federation last month had it um, got fined one hundred fourteen thousand uh, dollars for their for their for incidents in the world in World Cup in Qatar. OK, so it's one of those things where it's like. We've got to we've got to keep a strong eye on you know there's there's banter there's there's uh, there's there's passion there's the levels of of elements of where you get to where you want to be you want to support your nation and everything else but there's a line and I think that if you're gonna if these teams are gonna continue to cross it <coughs> excuse me or if clubs or if nations or or the fans that support these clubs or nations and I say clubs or nations as well because um, uh, one of the reasons why I am bringing this up is because um, uh, Vinicius Jr. was interviewed after the one nothing win um, about uh, racism in that he's faced with his club team and sometimes even abroad 
for himself. And he actually broke down and started to cry in front of the cameras again, uh, simply, you know, revisiting the fact of how much like pure, sometimes pure venom is is out there, you know, like and, and it's it, it, it could go even further. It connects to Liverpool fans when we hear, you know, um, the um, the terrible chance to go uh, uh, go out against us as well, you know, with with the. Um, with the Hillsborough dis- disaster, you know, uh, you know, like as in um, those, this part of football needs to be really addressed and not only addressed, it needs to be, it needs to have, and we need to have more people out there that don't, that rather than don't be silent about it, to be active about it, you know, to be actively, not, not to, not to get into, I'm not saying, Hey, you need to go and stop it yourself and be vigilantes. No, if anything, no, I mean, uh, that. you know, that. that's that's the last thing I want to see you do because that would just escalate into, into something, yeah, even worse. But go ahead, Brian. We want to say one yeah. last. Oh, well, one more before you do, Brian. Let me say this one last point. Yeah. But I, I was going to say there could be and should be a system and and set up similar to what Newcastle has set up. Whereas, in if you see these things happening, you're to you, you're going to have to report them. You know, you're going to have to do something about it because it's just going to continue to build and be a problem. And it's going to be a place where you're not going to be comfortable going to these matches. You're not going to be comfortable to be able to be a part of these games. And that's that's unfortunate. And it's going to put a real terrible um, depiction of what this beautiful game, as they call it, is when it has this ugliness that is allowed to be happening. Do you want to say some comments, Brian? And then JK, you can uh, comment on this as well. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, you brought a lot in there, you know, it's, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I know I said a lot. I'm sorry too, but I, I did go on a little no, bit of rant, but. You know, we're just with the main kind of, um, <clears throat> like arson for once, right. Uh, for one, they just had, uh, two arson fans were, were jailed, I think. No, sorry, we're just banned, not jailed. Mm-hmm. We're just banned um, for the tragedy chanting at the Liverpool game. Mm-hmm. All right, and um, two Manchester City fans, or Man United fans, have just been ba- uh, charged and they're appealing for other people. Mm-hmm. They have um, pictures, so they, they are actually this is one thing that I will say. Sorry, I know I've distracted. I was just looking for the story. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they have started to tackle this uh, tragedy chanting. And mm-hmm. like I said, they're, they're identifying people. But um, I did hear someone a while ago and they went uh, on another channel and they're, uh, they were incredibly stupidly telling everybody that um, if you were at a game and uh, there's someone there screaming this kind of abuse or screaming this kind of things. Even if <clears throat> even if he's not one of your own, uh, even if it's one of your own fans, yeah. then you should uh, go up to, you should walk up to one of the police or one of the stewards and point them out. Mm. And no. If not, that, then you should go up and um, confront them directly yourself. And if you don't mm. do that, then you're not a proper fan. And I was just like, you need no. to unplug your internet, mate, because you've just given the most dangerous freaking advice. Yeah, go up in front yeah. of 40,000 people, rat somebody out to the cops, point them out, <laughs> exactly. and, go to that and then go up and challenge them directly. The kind of guy who is happy to, in a stadium full of people, scream vile, racist abuse, or whatever kind of abuse at someone. Yeah, you want to, yeah, you should go up and confront that person. I was like, okay. And I was saying to this guy, because he's from Canada. And he goes over there every now and again. He's like, okay, mate, I'll meet you at the stadium the next time. And I'll watch you fucking do that. Because, mm. no, they have these systems in place where you see it. They say, I see it, say it, report it. Or see it, hear it, say it, mm-hmm. you know, report mm-hmm. it, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you hear someone, you you know, chanting about Hillsborough, saying stuff. You mm-hmm. go to where, you know, you need to go. And you say, I heard this person. I'm available for uh, interview if you need me to go in court and say I saw this and I don't know how it works but I'm sure it's something along those lines you know I witnessed mm-hmm. this car accident mm-hmm. and I'm willing to stand up in court and you know 
come to court and say oh, what I saw kind of thing. You know, that's you don't need to be confronting people or you know pointing them out. Yeah, you don't. But, don't. No. Yeah. But how this, easy, so, Brian, how easy like, could it be to say to, to have you like have you know? The, the, you, I was just say real quick. You know how easy could it be to just say if you're if you're in the in the crowd and you're hearing this these chants to be able to like you know how you can put like a, um when you, you could text something to like one of those like you know. Nine six eight five. Who yeah. knows? That some crazy number. It's not a phone number. But Nigel it's was pointing number. it out there. Nigel yeah. was pointing it out there. They need okay. more cameras and other oh, police in the crowd, but they have cameras everywhere, dude. Don't yeah. worry. There's cameras everywhere. So what you need to do, yeah. all you need to do, is report it afterwards, right? And then it's very very easily done. And you just say, I was sitting in seat A twenty two. And the guy four or five yards behind me, in front of me, to left me, wherever. They were mm -hmm. doing this. They were doing that. Mm -hmm. They'll have it on camera. They'll be able, they'll be able to go we'll back, zoom in, and say, right, he's in that area. He's A22. They're in that area. They'll be able to zoom in. They'll be able to spot these people. And that's how they'll do it. You don't, yeah, people don't need to put themselves in any kind of danger. No, don't put yourself, kind of risk, don't put yourself in, in like danger. That. That's, yeah, that's just... When you're especially when you're dealing with with that mentality of a of a fan, exactly. chances are it can end up getting worse. Face. It's only going to be worse. Yes. Whatever no, is will, the hundred percent, you will make it worse, right. and only for you. Right. Only, I was just yeah, going to say maybe they could do something you where like handle, yeah. you know you can, yeah, no, you know unless you're the kind of guy you know and you know you can handle yourself you know and no, if no, you feel don't even you know that. even then don't even, do that. even then don't even do that. It's not yeah. the right thing up, to do. You, you get yourself in trouble. You end up getting yourself but in trouble. nobody, look, man, at the same time, right, it's the other problem as well. And, JK, mm -hmm. I'll let you, you work me on this, but no one wants to be a rat. Yeah, I know. Thing. Oh, I know. Grassley, yeah. That's I mean, a thing. Snitches get, snitches get stitches. That's that kind of thing. Yeah. In Grassley, yeah, in England. Like you get yeah. fucked up if uh, yeah. if you did that. Yeah. That and yeah. but they're promoting it now. It's it's amazing how the world's just twisted one like full total. Um, to promote it through soap operas of the way you should behave. You know, if a guy's an yeah. idiot, you know, how much time are you gonna go up to him and tell him he's an idiot? You know, it's like the guy knows himself, like that Man United guy. Um, at the end of the game, what he was actually doing was totally caught on camera. So no one really needs to say anything. It's sort of it's sort of there, you know. Um, oh. Yeah, I'll just yeah carry on, Brian. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Man. No, no, I was gonna. I, I, no, I was gonna just add real quick though too is that I the Newcastle system that they have about the you're saying I was like that the report is if you see it report it you know don't be quiet about it whatever like I don't think I'll, I don't think it's that hard for you to be able to like pull your phone out. Text whatever section is being uh, being um, you know unruly, you know, and then that text will go to you know will go to whatever department or whatever place that they have it in the stadium, and then that then there could be someone that says, okay, let's send some let's send some uh, police officers over to monitor that area. That's all. Mm -hmm. You know, that's simple. Being, oh yeah, yeah. That's simple. But again, it's how, mentality. I mean, that's, 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 like, that's how simple it seems to me. Yeah. Oh, it is simple. It is simple. Like what you've described is simple, but people's brains work differently and individually. So it is still that kind of like a lot of people in England, JK will back me up. They'll sit there and they'll touch and they'll make a funny face and they'll give dirty looks. Oh, someone should really do something about that. Someone mm -hmm. should really yeah. do something about that. But yeah. they won't rat them up. Them, so they won't be the <laughs> one. Yeah. Like if someone else no. ratted them up, and the cops they'd came be, in and pulled them out. Oh, they'd be delighted and they'd be clapping. But they, again, look, not putting Liverpool down, but Liverpool is one, like every football club, bar maybe one or two now at this stage, is still predominantly, they're working class. Football is working class sport. The sport mm -hmm. is working class. Yeah, it's that scumbag over there. You, but yeah, you're not going to, you don't talk to the cops. You don't go to the cops. No. no you know, it, yeah, exactly. you just, you just don't. And that's only to the cops. It's like, yeah, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to listen to it. But no, I'm not going to call the cops on something. That's just not what yeah. you do. You right. know, so it, 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 to, yeah. it should yeah. be an afterwards thing where people who were 
you know, the more kind of uh, day tripper type people that are there that saw something, see something, you know, the, oh, did you see so? Oh, yeah, I was there, you know, I was over, you know, you know what I'm getting at, you know what I'm getting at. The, the locals yeah, no. aren't going to, you know, they're not going to be the guy that rang them. Right. They're not going to be that yeah. guy based. You know, it, it kind of. Sometimes, sometimes I think they don't say, sometimes they don't say things because maybe they're, they're angry. They're angry themselves. They don't want to necessarily go to, to the to the to the to the level that they're doing, but they're but their silence is in a sense speaking what they what they want to say or or that they would be saying this yeah. out loud. They would be joining in, in with a chance, but you yeah. know, for being silent and not doing anything about it, which is like in a sense of saying, yeah, you're being complacent to it or you know, complicit. Complicit to by it. your silence, as, as they say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and that's the thing about it is that I don't want to judge anyone individually. That's that I wouldn't judge anyone at a game. Like if I was at a game, I, I don't I, like I don't know how I react. I'd, I'd be t telling everyone about it afterwards. But would I mm -hmm. want to be going to court? Now? I, I look, I don't know. I no, don't, no, trust yeah, me. Yeah, I, don't, I, agree I agree with you. I don't want to be involved in courts and everything. Look, it's bad. It. it I'll tell you a quick, a quick, uh, quick little. It's a short, not even a story, but it's a, short, a little bit of a, a comparison at least. Here in America, for instance, that I've, you know, everyone know, well knows that I follow the, the the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles. They're the team, and they used to play at the stadium called the called Vet Veteran Stadium or, or the Vet is what it was called. To. And um, it was so bad that they used to have something called a kangaroo court inside the stadium. And I'm, uh, they might have it in other stadiums. I'm not certain if they have it in some stadiums, maybe in England or other places. But they called it a kangaroo court in the sense that they would arrest people in the stadium and you would go downstairs to a court yeah. to get, <laughs> to get <laughs> taken care of right there and what? then. That's they, how crazy um, it was. <laughs> yeah. They don't like, have it. They don't. They're like, they're cut. They're like we're cutting this out now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they where you know where they do have that. And J.K., you might actually know, you might not even realize this, but they obviously they don't have that in sports here. Mm -hmm. But in uh, Ireland and England, and in mm -hmm. some parts of Europe, they have that at big weekend music festivals, especially mm -hmm. back in the day, because the amount of people that were getting busted for minor drug possessions. What they oh, would do hard. would have, yeah, because like mm -hmm. back in the even the smallest thing you get, you'd get busted for something. So yeah, what they would major. do is they tell everyone to stay, and on the Monday, it, they'd all mm -hmm. just go to court, like all one hundred of them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because the music festival would always be in some random small part really? of the country, you know, wouldn't mm -hmm. be in a city, so they'd be in some small town court, and they'd mm -hmm. all have to be there. So rather than bringing them all back. Yeah, they, it wouldn't be there on the day as such. But yeah, it'd mm -hmm. be like the Monday morning, the day after the festival. It's like everyone that gets arrested has to go to court and they just process mm -hmm. them all in one day because all these petty, stupid little crimes, like enough mm -hmm. for a couple of spliffs, you know, two pills of whatever you were taking, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. big, big stuff, but right. just in, out, in, in, yeah. out, in, yeah. out. Yeah, real quick, you, 50 quid fine, out, 50 quid fine, out, 50 quid fine, out. Just when you make a... for the stupidest stuff, like, yeah, put it in the poor box as well over here. But imagine, imagine that. Things. Imagine if you had, imagine in, if in Wembley, for instance, you know, they had something, they had a, a court downstairs. Whereas, <laughs> as in, if you're you know, in Wembley or you're, you know, you're causing those kinds of circumstances, you know, you can get you, you be, it's not, oh, hey, here's your ticket, go wait outside the, go wait outside. At some point, at some parts and points, they had, um, they had, uh, I believe, that I want to say, holding <laughs> cells in, in, in yeah. there too, for something like that. a Trump tank. Basically, those would have been fun. <laughs> those would have been yeah. real fun. All exactly. this, all these awful fans in there together. Oh. All the different fans just thrown in the same oh, I don't cell. know. I've never, well, I've never been a part of that, so I don't know. The two guys <laughs> that get arrested for fighting each other end up in the same cell together. Five minutes uh, later, that'd be something because okay. it's not like you get your individual cell. You get thrown into like <laughs> you get thrown into a into an actual like, um, you know, yeah, into <laughs> like a big, big room. 
Yeah, those old ones used to just a big huge room of bars at like fifty guys in there. Oh hello, hello, how are you? And then that the big huge massive like, guy walked in. It's like police yeah, academy or something. Yeah, yeah. End it's, up doing ten it's... years at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, no, <laughs> <You're so laughs> they forget about you and you never come out. Yeah, <laughs> I went to a game at Wembley and, and ended up staying for the next five years. I ended yeah. up going two, ended up getting two, two to five years. <laughs> I listened to some of the best cup finals ever. I didn't see him, but I heard him. I heard him. I heard him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be horrible. Oh. Um, you know what? Quickly, um, I was gonna say hmm. when I've been to Anfield, I always ended up sitting near the away fans uh, behind the goal. Tell hmm. you the truth, if one got sort of rowdy, the majority of fans, even their own fans, will end up just turning around looking at him, and the silence hmm. would like make that guy give it a rest. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed that in a lot of games I used to go to a lot, like when one, one two, I've given it. Yeah, yeah, fans, police, and fans. Yep. That's the best way. Best way. That is the best way. Yeah. Just tw- two thousand people looking at the ball. Don't it be can a get ugly quick, though. Yeah, it can sometimes get ugly, you know, um, quick. And that's I like it's it's a really uh, you know I want to say slippery slope, but it's definitely a, a thin line, you know that that you 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 um, you gamble with. So, I mean, for instance, for Mexican Soccer Federation, because of their their um, unruly fans, um, or for some portion of their unruly fans. Again, that's not it's not the entire Mexican, um, you know, uh, Mexican fan base that is like this. But because of their actions, they've had to play qualifying games in front of no fans, like closed stadiums, like pandemic level style stadiums in Mexico mm-hmm. for their 2018 and 2022 World Cup and Olympic qualifying. Um, uh, campaigns. They played some of those games. They played in front of no fans. Behind closed doors. Yeah, that's crazy. It has Absolutely an crazy. It has an you effect know? on the the whole thing. You know, the fans want yeah. the players want the fans there. It gives them energy. Oh yeah, you They're want the there. fans there. You want the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You want you don't want to play in that like you know somewhat empty. hollow, uh, em- empty or little, somewhat empty you know atmosphere. You know, definitely don't want. We we know what that's like having watched the teams played play in the pandemic era. Um, we don't want that. But I mean, like, it's almost to the point where like, as in what do you do? What do you go? What is the next step? And, you know, eventually, you know, is it like, do you, do you, with, with, for instance, the, you know, um, what you were saying about, um, about the, the chance that, you know, that we have to endure, you know, is it to a point where you could say you get, then you, you start, punishing clubs or punishing these international teams the same way you punish these international teams you start saying hey you know what if you if you're going to act this way then you know you're going to get a fine or maybe we're going to take away we're going to take away the ability for you to that to participate in that next home game could you go that far well this is the uh, issue like where uh how do you control twenty thousand people how do you control thirty thousand people Especially yeah. when it's in a big game, you, yeah. you can't. They, like you've said, they've been banned before. This has happened before. They've seen the the consequences that they can't then go to games. But it just like it doesn't seem like this is the passion. This is the madness. This is what it brings out. And I'm not really sure what you can do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really don't know what else. Like, yeah, <clears throat> these no, guys are acting Christmas. like this. This is what it brings out in people. But Norm, um, no, you know, or Lee, Lee Wizkid was right there just yeah, exactly. before that. He That's big. I mentioned like, that a week, I mentioned that a, a little bit ago, yeah, or another episode, yeah. But, like the um, the uh, the previous comment that you're saying, like that it's actually, the, the like we're talking about fans, police, and fans. It is the hooligan element and all that. They, they took it away from the stadium because they realized that you couldn't fight at the stadium, basically. They brought it all away. Mm-hmm. They brought the real, mm-hmm. you know, the old school vibe. Like it used to be a lot worse. Yeah, way no, yeah, yeah, way yeah. Worse. But um, yeah, it used to be like my side more. story style, where there's two gangs just oh, meet in and the go. Stands. <laughs> in the stands, and just go at it. Yeah. 
Yeah, now it has to be two miles from the stadium and all that because they know, you know that that's what they do now. Like, you watch these Polish guys. They all copy the English guys. That's where they all brought it from. But they meet up in, JK, I'll tell you, over in Germany, Poland. They go and meet mm-hmm. up in forests, organized fights in forests. And it's nowhere near a stadium, but it's two football mm-hmm. things that they yeah, don't that... have their fight over there. They don't do yeah. it at the stadium anymore. Not like it was back right. in the day. You know, it, it doesn't it leave used to be... it said, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like that's what you're saying. Like it, it is it's not great now, but it's you think it's not great now? It, it's a hell of a lot better. It used to be a lot worse. Yeah, it used to be a lot worse. At, yeah, to be a lot but worse. also yeah. at the expense. Those are some the dark days, of, by the I way. Would, I mean, but I, I, at the expense of, I would say, atmosphere. Right. The, that's yeah. the trade off. Exactly. Exactly that. The I was going about to say that. I was going to say that just then. Uh, I've been to games, bro, in the old days where. When you went to the game, the energy was like it was crazy. I can't really explain to it. I can't really explain it. It was just a, it was the energy of not really being safe. It was like it could kick off, sort of energy. A bit of danger now. Yeah, it's like a danger sort of energy. But now, when you go to games, it's so family orientated. The, the game yeah. has become like kids. Well, that's mothers, what that's what you. you know. But you do you you can't you want that you miss though. that. Yeah, you want you want the element yeah, of the you want the element of like the passion, the the, the mm-hmm. energy, and the, all that, all the you know the fight and the bite. But I mean, you don't. But there's a line because now a lot more of these games are being attended by you know families and such, and mm-hmm. they understand the fact of like it's yes, you want the passionate days. passionate fan out there, but you also want that family member that's going to bring their child, Can't bring their hope. kids. And, no, yeah. that's the problem. You can't have both. Basically, what you're yeah. talking about there is, yeah. well, I, I know you grade them differently or whatever, but over mm-hmm. here, when we put uh, things on movies, basically we have a movie that's 12s, which means anyone over 12 can watch it. Yeah, PG, we call it PG-13. Like PG-13. Yeah. Like anyone, anyone under, anyone under 13 yeah. has to be a, yeah, brought by so, you have yeah. to be with a what they or, or, yeah, so what they want is an an eighteens movie that twelve year olds can watch, right? So mm-hmm. the atmosphere, the of the, the if you see a movie and it's an eighteens movie, you know, okay, this is going to be you know at least this is going to be a real movie. You know, you see it in its twelves mm-hmm. movie, you know, oh okay, it's not going to have anything you know too much in it. It's going to be fine, you know. But they want now to turn football into a you know a 12 a pg product whereas yeah, back in the day it was an 18 product and that's where mm-hmm. you got the atmosphere if you want it to be 12s yeah. you're not going to have that atmosphere because like mm-hmm. jk said it was an element of danger and there's a difference between fear and danger you know you didn't not everyone got bottled not, but look back in the day it was freaking horrible right a lot of the times especially in the 80s but it's a working class sport look at where it came from okay mm, you know yeah. don't it, it's grown up now but the when you look at it it's very simple economics if you have a season ticket and you live around the corner from anfield and you can either walk mm. there or get a bus you buy your season ticket you have your dinner or your lunch or whatever and then you go and watch the match i don't know you might get a packet of crisps or something and then you go home <laughs> right, you don't spend a penny at Anfield, right? If you're going and you're a tourist like me, I'm going for the first time. It's my only time, say, right? Coming over mm-hmm. from Ireland, only time I've ever been. I'm going to do the tour. I'm going to buy something in the shop. I'm going to buy food. I'm going to buy a drink. I'm going to mm-hmm. buy I don't know, like uh, some, some whatever other random shite that they have there, and do spend money at the stadium on the attractions or whatever they might be. I'll spend mm-hmm. a couple of hundred quid. The club wants mm-hmm. sixty thousand of those every week. They mm-hmm. that spend, mm-hmm. let's say, two hundred quid on their match day experience, as it were, on their visit to the stadium. They're going to buy a shirt. They travel all the way from Thailand. Of course, they're going to buy a shirt. Of course, right. they're going to do the tour, right? right? Whereas if you live around the corner and you bought your season ticket for a thousand pounds, you're not spending a penny at the stadium. You're walking in, you're walking mm-hmm. out again. You've spent your thousand pounds. Why should you spend any money there? You have your shirts. Mm-hmm. You want 60,000 of them, or do you want 60,000 uh, South Koreans, Finlanders, Irish, 
over there spending, you know, it's simple. That's what they want. They don't want the, the match going fan of of old singing their heart out. Yep, yep. You know, and that's what pays the wages and that's what gets you these, oh, buy Mbappe, buy Mbappe. Well, where'd you get the money for that? Mm-hmm. You know, this and you stuff. know what? The having that family sort of feel to it is extra sort of customers to the club, women, the kids, it, and with the kids, you've got future Liverpool fans. So the customer <laughs> fan base, as it's called now, is going to always get bigger and get mm-hmm. always be there. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I think in the old days mm-hmm. it was just guys going to games. You know. Now it's like mm-hmm. a very mixed crowd now, and uh, people love shopping. You know, <laughs> uh, take the kids into the club shop. Yeah, I want this top. I want this top. I want this and that. So it's true mm-hmm. what Brian said. You know, it's the way football has become. It's become a business, hundred um, percent. But the way the prices have increased, for example, from paying forty-five pound for a Liverpool shirt mm-hmm. to one hundred and forty pound within the mm-hmm. time Klopp's been there. Is a bit ridiculous for me. Um, yeah, fun, it's going to get even worse. It's going to get worse, you know. It's going to get worse, mm. and I think it now is the time to actually fans to get a grip of the game and actually realizing mm. where it's going. You know, when you've got children and they all sport Liverpool, you've got to spend a lot of money before the season starts for the new kits because when they go to school, the other kids will be saying, "Oh, that's last season's kit, and you got the new one yet." Oh, so that's mm. exactly yeah. that. So it's football's go. That's why I'm not a big fan of FSG because of that philosophy. Yeah, it's going to make our club healthier, mm-hmm. of course. But who's going to be paying for that? Is the actual fans? You know, why should a mother with three mm-hmm. kids, single parent maybe, end up paying nearly three, four hundred quid just for for the three boys to get three kids? You know. No, or, I, no, I get that. There is there is a certain um, element out there that is, I I, I know about the whole. Um, uproar over the England kit, for instance, and how it's like 120 60. pounds, I think, or something like that. 160 pounds? No, it's, it's 100, 169 for the, uh, the, the the fish, the proper one, and then they have mm-hmm. something called a match day one, which is slightly lower quality, and that's only mm-hmm. se- that's 70 or 80 quid. I mean, I... I used to buy top. I used to like I told you before. I don't wear colors, but I used to buy them mm-hmm. uh, a couple of times when I when I played five a side, you know, for for playing mm-hmm. five a side. Mm-hmm. And I stopped when they got to forty quid because I was like, I'm not spending forty quid on a football shirt. Right. No way. Right. You know, and someone say, "I'll get you this one." That one was like it was sixty quid or something like that. Oh, you want like for my a present or something? I said, "No, you want my present worth seventy quid? Don't buy me a freaking jersey." Mm-hmm. Like twenty, like thirty, thirty-five quid. That's the most I ever paid for something like that. Like to pay a hundred and sixty-nine pounds sterling for an England jersey. That's insanity. That's mm-hmm. complete insanity. I don't know. Yeah. And like DK is saying, if you've got three kids, what are you going to do? Buy one of them? Sure. No, Share you've it. got to buy them all. <laughs> yeah. Either buy them all a shirt or you buy none of them a shirt. Yeah, I know. You can't You can't just buy your favorite. <laughs> or at least you'll know who the favorite is. If only one gets a shirt, you're not going to say, okay, everyone three, with your three kids, hey, everyone, pick a, pick a player. Cool, cool. You're going to share this shirt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, Johnny wears it on Monday, Mickey wears it Tuesday, and Brian uh, exactly. Tommy exactly. wears it on Wednesday, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Lee Whiskey was saying about the prices, it varies of what shops you get your shirt from, and then they've got mm-hmm. different types of shirts. You've got the stadium shirt, the match day shirt. So mm-hmm. the prices yeah. sort of vary um, as well, you know? And if you buy that direct one, the from most Nike, expensive one, is that, mm-hmm. is the, I, I'm getting this mix up, Jacob. Is the most expensive one? Is that the stadium or the match day? It's the stadium, <laughs> right? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, that's the one that's 169, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 
because I didn't even know what, like, since when is there a stadium kit and a match day kit? Like, what's, what the fuck is that like? Yeah. Yeah. Because I got the, I got, I got the green one. Yeah. Last, the, like a dark green that I think it was our third kit or second kit with the mm. red uh, tick on there. It's like the match, I think, set, I think I'm going to have a quick look what, which one it is, but it was the match 140, um, but it was direct from Nike. But if you go to England, you go to Sports Direct, you can go yeah, to other yeah, sort of that's shops. That's what Lee was saying here. He was saying something. He says yeah. he's bought, Lee said he's bought two shirts a season for the last four seasons. They're all official MB or Nike and all were 30 pounds. But um, top official stadium shirts are th three times that, at least three times mm -hmm. that. Uh, he says, like check out, the, says, check out the price of hospitality tickets at any stadium. You never... You'll yeah. never moan about paying a tenner for a, for a pie again. Well, you should still moan about about paying ten quid for a pie. By the way, yeah, that's yeah. still robbery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but um, yeah, yeah. I did want. I, I know did, a couple uh, of people who've been in those boxes, and I think they were. One was eight grand. Obviously, mm -hmm. they didn't like they were invited. One right. was eight grand, and the other I think was ten grand, and it was basically i think it might have been to do with the number of people there or something but yeah you you go mm -hmm. in and you have all the tvs there it's just like a mini room with your own bar yeah and, uh, it's usually around like a thousand it's like a thousand room. pounds a person usually it's like around a thousand yeah, pounds a person you get to meet players you get like a meet and greet you get all these extra like you can drink other people can't drink you can just kind of stand out and drink and other people aren't allowed in the stadium mm -hmm. but yeah you get all these kind of all these really naff cheesy sounding extras that come along afterwards and it's just like it's mm -hmm. just some way for a guy to show off and you know bring his mates to anfield and say oh this costs 15 grand lads you know but it's not it's not somewhere i wouldn't uh, you would have to put a gun to my head to get me to watch a match in a corporate box what are the kind of people that i know have been in corporate box because they're not my kind of people you know i'd rather be down the stands you know or you know in the pub pretty much because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. these are just guys that aren't even there most of them are like oh he brought 10 guys from the company over from uh, from Dublin, two of them are Liverpool. Like the guy that will do it will be a little, whoever the boss is, whatever club he supports, he'll be the one that gets the box. Like one was Ireland, and there was a few. One was Ireland. Uh, there was one that went to Man United, and there was two boys that went to Liverpool. But mm. so whoever the boss was was the guy that got it. But yeah, half at least half the guys or three quarters of guys didn't even follow football or weren't fans of the team. So they're just there for the free food and the drink mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the stuff afterwards. Couldn't give a shit about watching the game. Couldn't care less. Oh, yeah. You know? No, I mean, yeah. yeah. They're the people that yeah. get to watch them. And, and most the ones, ordinary fans are the price. Yeah. For the ones that have the yeah, money to pay those, those kind of prices for those tickets. You know? <laughs> Uh, I went to no, the look, no, just game. lucky enough to work for some guy that wants to go and show off and, and invite them to. Like, all of these guys went there invited, didn't have to pay for any of it because their bosses, oh, we're going to do this as a, as a present to the lads. You had a good year in sales, or you had a, it was like, oh, the bosses invited. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. All this it's stuff, a, all a, those boys, they couldn't give a shit. They're just there, like, costing them nothing. Yeah. The boss, it's all on the credit card. And yeah, yeah, they don't either follow football or they don't like Liverpool. So you've got eight of those yeah. guys, six of those guys, maybe up there in a the box, and a couple of lads stand out on the balcony. But they've been drinking six or seven hours before the match even starts because mm -hmm. they've been on the hospitality all day. It's the worst yeah. kind of crowd. It really is terrible yeah. kind of crowd. But hey, I look, that's to what do pays one, the bills want, these days. Yeah, pays the bills, man. I wanted to do one. I want we're gonna land the plane plane here, but before we exit the plane, I wanted to give a a big shout um for uh the Legends game was uh was over the weekend. Something that I definitely want to do. What a lineup. Um, yeah, great what lineup. Good. Yeah, some really, really great names involved in this one. Um it was good to see uh, like Torres. To, if I could, 
I would like to give a shout out to Douglas at uh, Douglas Horn at the Douglas Football Channel, who mm -hmm. is actually the guy who started the campaign, if you want to call it that, or the idea of inviting Sven to come over and do this. Douglas oh, wow. is somebody That's... I've known for five, maybe mm -hmm. five years now. Just from That's doing awesome. stuff on YouTube, he yeah. has his own Liverpool mm -hmm. channel on YouTube. He has one for a long time. He's been mm -hmm. taking some time off recently because he's had a new baby and a new job. But he's mm -hmm. a Scottish fan who knows uh, more about football than I, you know, I could ever ever learn. And he's only a mm -hmm. young guy. And uh, he was on Sky, I think Sky News, because he mm -hmm. tweeted about this. And when he heard about Sven's terminal illness. He knew that Sven was a Liverpool fan and he said, let's launch a petition campaign to get this done so Sven can mm -hmm. do it. Now, he hasn't gotten mm -hmm. much credit for it since it happened, mm -hmm. but he actually was the first person to bring it up. Mm -hmm. And it was picked up by somebody and he was interviewed on Sky News a couple of months ago now when he brought it up first. Because that's how clued in uh, Doug is. He already knew mm -hmm. there was a Legends game about, uh, against Ajax coming up in like four months' mm -hmm. time. And he would, the first thing he thought is like, why not get Sven in to manage that? And mm -hmm. fair play to him. I, I, you know, he's not getting any. Uh, I checked it again yesterday. I haven't seen many people mm -hmm. mentioning him. But mm -hmm. I, I'd like to see him get a lot more credit for that because he, he so. kind of started yeah. the whole thing. You know, yeah. I'm not sure it would have would have ever been mentioned or happened without Doug. Mm -hmm. And he's just a, a small little YouTuber, loves Liverpool, and you can tell uh, knows his history because instantly knew Sven is a Liverpool fan. Knew it was yeah. his dream to manage at Anfield, to be Liverpool manager, mm -hmm. knew it never happened before. Uh, I, I just think it's a great story. And then you know, to, to see him do it, but also to see some of the players that were out there. Some yeah. real, you know, that, you know, I spoke about Legends game the other night that I had a terrible time watching. But I would mm -hmm. love to have seen this. You know, for some real, you know, they're looking after themselves a lot better these days, but yeah. proper yeah. teams, these are my year, my year, your year, JK's year. These are the guys we grew up watching. Torres, yeah. Gerard, Lippmann, you know, these are the guys yeah. we, we remember. Yep. Agar, Skirtle, um, yeah. Um, some really, really great names. Uh, Kite out there. Cissé was there. Um, your boy Igor was there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, Gonzalez <laughs> was there. Um Elzard was there, which is a, a name that was a uh, you know, uh, good yeah. Wow. It was good to see him get a goal as well. You know, I watched the training and, uh, the day before, and mm -hmm. him, Cesar, and Torres all were banging goals in training. It was just mm -hmm. mad that they all scored as well the next day. So mm -hmm. training is important. <laughs> so you, when you see someone play, training good, they end up playing good in the game. Yeah. Just watch the training video, you'll see it. The way Torres finishes and stuff is like, wow. Yeah. Torres got a goal too. Torres yeah. got a goal too. He was he wanted one badly. You could tell, but yeah, it was so yeah. great to see him uh, in 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 the in that red kit again. Um, yes, uh, Sven Goran Eriksson has finally fulfilled his lifelong dream. Is what I wanted to say. Bring this up is that his lifelong dream of banishing Liverpool. Um, a wish, obviously, that was um, as Brian uh, Elkman put about was revealed after his um, terminal cancer diagnosis. Diagnosis. Uh, the 76-year-old former England manager uh, went on to publicly announce that he has cancer in January uh, and put it out there also that, you know, he's always wished to be, one of his biggest wishes in life was to have been, uh, to have had the, the honor to be the manager, to be the manager of Liverpool. And um, seeing him get that honor was very, very, um, very, very powerful. To say the least. Yeah, um, I put the link. Brian put the link in there for uh, the yeah the dugout football channel. Actually, I'm I'm I think I, I subscribed to that already. Actually, 
Yeah. Um, that's the guy that uh, came up with the idea first. He's a great guy. Like I said, mm -hmm. almost encyclopedic knowledge of football across Europe, Scotland, England. He's just one of those guys. He uh, He's a real fan because he could tell you as much about the um, Oldham versus, um, you know, Rotherham game at the weekend as he could about, you know, Liverpool versus the City, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. one of those so people I can tell player. you who, who, was sub, who was substituted when and, you know. I've heard the name, though. If you're not yeah. subscribed to him, if you're not subscribed to him, go over and check that. Like yeah, I said, he might be a bit infrequent at the moment because, yeah, yeah he, he used to do it a lot. He's gone all the time, but he has just had a young kid and, uh, and some stuff. So, mm -hmm. if, if you get credit, he, if that, active, that, yeah, yeah. If, if his channel is a bit inactive, don't worry, he, he will be doing stuff again. Uh, no doubt, yeah, so, spot yeah, on maybe, um, maybe reach out sometime. He could always be, you know. Maybe participate on. on this channel too. You know, it's yeah. one way or another. Be great to see. Uh, it's always great. Oh, to I have can make that happen home. straight away. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll be yeah, great. Get him on, see what like, he says. Um, because yeah, you know, having a wealth of knowledge, you know, to draw from is always empowering for all of us. You know, for you know, to be a part of like some of the memories that we possibly didn't get to live through or such. Hearing them from those that did actually does. Really oh no! Really don't get oh. Oh no! Don't get it wrong, man. Don't get it wrong. You, Doug is way younger than us. Oh, Doug oh, is oh. one of those guys. Oh no, he's like he's like, literally just had his first kid. He's he's a young okay. guy. Okay. Well, then yeah, that's yeah, even he's, better. He's not, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That's why it's so uh, impressive. It's the name, he's, Doug. Nothing, like, yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah, Doug maybe he could participate on a, maybe he could participate on the yeah. the hip hop or the music, the, the music, or something or something. No, he's only he's only in his <laughs> early thirties. Yeah, okay. Probably only yeah, yeah, he's a pretty young guy. Well, um, cool. Well, we'll hopefully get to make that happen. Go ahead, JK. I just want to quickly say about um respect to that guy for coming up with an idea and then doing something and something happened with the idea. It's a good yeah. example to other people, you know. Um yeah. I think sometimes people let themselves think, Oh, my idea is not really that good. Why not? You know, just go with it. Yeah, make it happen. Um I just want to quickly say about Torres, bro, the way the guy Torres left us and went to Chelsea, you know, and he plays for us in a Legends game. That's mm -hmm. how loving our club is, you know. We let a guy go for 50 million to one of our rivals at that time. Mm -hmm. And the way we welcome him back to Anfield with Gerard and stuff shows you the level of Liverpool Football Club. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. It's one of the reasons why I I the the connection that so many uh, former players have with Liverpool is a special connection. Yeah, they've gone. Some have gone on to play for other clubs. Yep. You know, um, oh. whether it's in other countries or maybe even in 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 country. You know, but they've gone on and they have definitely. Um, it, it they've still held Liverpool in their hearts, and it's it's that's special to me. You want to say something, Brian? Well, with Tar no, with Tara is I man. The, the the guy had you never walk alone tattooed on his arm before he even got here. You know, he was just like he had it on his armband. You know, he was yeah. that guy was a Liverpool fanatic before he even played for it. So, I mean, they wrote you know they wrote the song about him. That's one of the best songs ever. You know, his armband yeah. said he was a red Torres Torres. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. they knew it from day one before he even got here. It was like this guy's a Liverpool fan. That's why we love yeah. him. You know, as yeah. much as we do. You know, then he came and did what he did, but it, it was everyone knowing like that this guy wants to play for us. He doesn't want to play for the Manx. Doesn't right. want to play for someone that he wants to play for Liverpool. Yeah. So that's Makes why the, the thing with Chelsea, look, it, it helps that he went there and was awful, right? Let's not have mm -hmm. a problem. Right. He scored some great goals for them in Europe. He scored in the Champions League final for them. Or in the, in the UEFA, the UEFA Europa League, as of the time he scored in that. But in the in, in the league, he was he was terrible for them because his basically he said he, he like like Owen. Everyone was shocked mm. when he left. Mm. Everyone was disgusted when he left. But when the guy himself comes out five years later, goes, "Oh yeah, I was I was done. 
when I left Liverpool, I was done. My knee was done. Oh, and my hamstrings were done. I was mm-hmm. basically past my best. I was finished. Torres, the same. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the player that he we had, and we'd seen that because he was quiet that season. He knew it. Yeah, he knew and it. Chelsea still, still bought him. You know, we we messed it up with the money, but I think yeah, it, it shows how fans can be a bit hypocritical. But as I said, that all fans are hypocrites because football mm-hmm. makes you be a hypocrite. Football makes you contradict yourself all the time. Football makes you change your mind, be wrong, and be right. It makes mm-hmm. you you can't be perfect having you know opinions about about football. So, mm-hmm. and someone like Torres, people almost kind of forget that he played for Chelsea because he you kind of, you kind of, football. yeah, you kind of, uh, you kind of do, but unfortunately, you kind of do. But uh, the commentator. Uh, who it was too? Whoever was doing color commentation, it was doing. They had a couple of people on there, but the the color commentator said something that he had a shot that didn't go the way, or he had a shot, or something happened with Torres that didn't go the way that you know that it wasn't. It didn't go didn't go well, and he goes, "Oh, that that looked more like the Torres at Chelsea than it did the, the Torres at Chelsea Liverpool." Liverpool. Yeah, I, 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 that shows you how. Uh-huh. That shows you how predictable these guys are because about 15 seconds ago, I knew we were going to say. I knew he was going to say that was mm-hmm. more Chelsea far as then. They were. Yeah, that's how predictable mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. assholes are. Yeah, that was a I really lame. That was, that was, well, yeah, like, they like today, man. I was like, you don't even need to bring that up, man. You don't need to bring that up. But again, <laughs> what was his debut? What was Tara's debut? Oh. Who do you make his debut again? Yeah, what I think now. Um, Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah, it was against Chelsea. Yeah. 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 That game with the pass, where he stands up, is it Ivanovic? Stands him up and then bursts pass and then curls it into the bottom corner. His first goal for Liverpool, which is like just one of the, the best goals. Debut. Still yeah. one of the best goals he scored. Yeah. It looks like nothing, but he runs in. Takes a ball mm-hmm. from Jared, pass from Jared. That was going to become a bit of a running, <laughs> of a running team. Jared passing to Torres. I think mm-hmm. Ivanovic comes out. He stops, stands him up, and then just goes past him with a burst of pace. Ivanovic ends up on his arse, and Torres uh, curls it into the bottom corner. Mm-hmm. Day one, first goal, then scores 30, 32 goals. Debut mm-hmm. season, something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah. doesn't really get much better. That it doesn't, it doesn't get, get much better. better. It doesn't say, Very "Hey, deep. hey, uh, I've arrived. I'm here." You know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and also, I yeah, lost yeah. it. Say, you're talking about shirts. Very few players, and this comes out that kid as well. Very few players have ever looked more perfect in a Liverpool game mm-hmm. than him with a number nine on his back. You know the way some footballers just look like footballers and some don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the way he moved. He looks like a footballer, yeah. In red. But he looked wrong in blue. You know. In, it did look wrong in blue. Thing. It felt wrong yeah, in blue. It looks wrong in blue. Yeah. You know, him in red, that number nine on his back, moving the way yeah, he yeah. did, the size of him, it, he just looked so perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just yeah. very few players will come in and just like this guy, real deal. Well, yeah, no, it was great. It was great to see him back. It was great to see him score. Um, I, I, I liked, I, I, I'd like to see say when he played for us as well. Um, and it was, um, it was great to see him get a goal as well. Uh, Torres was a little bit of a, he was a little bit. Uh, he was a little tempered with his anger a little bit because uh, there was a there was an opportunity that he probably could have got a pass. He could have got a pass. Big guy now. And, and, huh? Big guy now. I, I, I saw some random tweet or some comment or something, and it was like, oh, my God, the size of Torres now. And I'm from the old mm-hmm. school, right? So I didn't click clock it immediately. Like I just thought, oh, ex-footballer, he's gone and gone a bit, you know, fat if it's okay to say yeah, he's gotten, he's, 
I mean, age hits all of us. Oh, yeah, that's what they all do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it turns out he turned into Rocky Balboa. Yeah, he looks He's gone out, out there and that. gone full even Drago on it. <laughs> like, the guy is absolutely massive. I thought they were saying, oh, he's yeah, going to yeah. put on a load of weight. And I was thinking, oh, here we go, typical Legends game. No, he stays in the out. gym. He still works out. This yeah, time, there's, yeah there's, but it looks like he's decided I, to go into the you know the upper level of, no, I want to yeah. bulk up now. Yeah, he's like, bulked no, up, he, though. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was on he's, he's, he's not bell belly. He's not beer belly. Yeah, he's not beer belly. No, this guy. He's, yeah, I was yeah, just he's, the usual. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Though back in the nineties, oh, this old player is basically oh, look at the size of him now. Back then, mm-hmm. that meant automatically now he's really fat. Now it's yeah. just, oh, actually, no, like he's he's look at the size of him now, yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah, there's something they show. I he's saw like, someone do a thread on Twitter. Yeah, I saw someone mm-hmm. do a thread on Twitter about it. And they're like, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. him, uh, and they showed all these other players. It's like. Um, one of them, who is it? Ray Parler, uh, mm. Louis, uh, Louis Garcia, Raul, mm. all these guys are now twice as big as they were when they were playing, but muscle wise, yeah, all it's of these guys be like lean and strong, not skinny, yeah. but kind of skinny, not muscle, mm. not like a drug ball, you know, not mm. like a, a sheer or even like more skinny and rake and just quick. But now it's just like, yeah, they. They're, they're all like super wealthy and they're all super fit. Yeah, they have their own gyms in their world. house. Yeah, exactly. But they just started yeah. to up it a bit, you know? Like, you know those things you see on Twitter where they pop up, is if you want this this body or that body? And they're like, yeah, I'm actually going to go up to the next one. Yeah, I'll take that where one. Where it goes like, yeah. Yeah, now you're super ripped. It's like, okay, Fernando, right. man, okay. Right. Did you see Van no, Der Vaart? Was, yeah. Did you see Van Der Vaart? Van Der Vaart? Yeah, From, yes, yeah. Yeah, he didn't look too healthy, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, he, 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 he liked the good stuff. Fight. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He's one of the older school. Yeah, what a fuck. Yeah, yeah. what red a wine, man. whatever. He like yeah. you could tell he's at the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, two, two well, of the best um, seasons. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. No, yeah, yeah. You know. Send love. Yeah. Uh, it's love. yeah. Um, I'm sending the best to the family as they as they get through this very difficult time. It's, it's difficult when you know the end is at hand, and uh, you know, and it's just a matter of when it when it when it will be. So it's not it's not easy. It's the reason why I say you know through, um, whenever we end our segments, I, I try to emphasize to take care of yourselves, but also to be, by taking care of yourselves, you'll be able to possibly. Um, be able to take care of your loved ones in your life. Um, it's not an easy thing to deal deal with, but it's something that we all necessarily uh, should look at as a principle that we hold in our lives um, because, uh, yeah, life is precious. So, um, so again, we're, gonna, uh, we're already landed. The, we already touched down. We're going to open up these doors here so that you can go on to your final destinations if this is not the last of your destinations for the day. Um Big, big games uh, that are going to be hitting this weekend. But before they do, we're going to be bringing out some um, we're going to bring out some more content for you guys. Uh, We have some content that isn't always isn't might be content that's not necessarily um, completely soccer or at least or at least or at least uh, football related in that of um, a Liverpool of a Liverpool essence. But we're going to be bringing out some episodes for you guys just so, you know, we can get through get through the week. And be able to like you know you know have a little bit of like something to to have for entertainment and for maybe discussion points and uh, for the pub or your family or your friends that you're just you know or maybe this is a topic that might you know spark an idea that you never really thought about. So be to be sure to uh, put that uh, subscription uh, to this channel if you haven't, and also be sure to uh, click that notification bell. That's the most. That's one of the most important things to do because then you'll know when we go live, and please do comment, like, do everything that's being said here. You know, by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing, this becomes a, a real movement. You know, as and we're trying to make a movement that actually gets away from a lot of the like same old tired approaches. 
that some of these content creators, now that there's so many of them, uh, oh, so many of us out there, you know, um, it gets to a point where like, hey, you know, let's be let's be different. Let's be the one that that we, uh, we let's be that beckon on beckon light on on the hill type deal. So big up, please do share, and um, oh, I will look for you guys man, to be. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. You're gonna, I'll, I'll give you a shout out, or you can give a shout oh, last sorry? shout. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give your last sorry, shout. Sorry. No, sorry. I was kind of just talking to myself there. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut across you there. No, no, but no. You're, all, but like, right it, yeah. Right it's a different me. flavor. It's just a different flavor every now and again. No better, no worse than whatever. If you like everyone, you know, if cool. you like no one, you know, doesn't really matter. We're right. just a different, uh, we're just a different flavor trying to do something that maybe we think we might enjoy and might be an interesting to other people. But it's it's still just yeah. Liverpool. It's still just the same stuff. But again, we what, 12 minutes, 17 yeah. You know, you're all going to do the usual liking and subscribing and sharing stuff. But more important than that is if you do like the shows, if you do like, you know, what 12 Man is doing, then tell somebody about it rather. Because mm -hmm. actually, you know, the word of mouth is the best way for something creative to actually grow mm -hmm. in any way rather than, you know, doing stuff. Just actually tell somebody about it, that you're watching it, you like it, you know. Not just share, not just like describing. Actually, in the real world, tell a real person, like the boys always say on Beijing, tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't just like, don't just subscribe. Actually, go out into the world and say, I watched this thing, I liked it. You might like it. Check it out. That'll yeah. have way more than yeah. these silly YouTube algorithms because they don't really like channels that you know don't fit their thing anyway so the only way to get really a community going is to bring in new people because people tell them about it you know mm -hmm. that's the only mm -hmm. way youtube isn't going to help us you know no, youtube no. isn't going to do what we need to do so it'll be people like that are in the chat telling other people out there i watch this thing every night go and watch it yourself you might like it. yeah yeah JK, do you want to give a, a, a shot before too? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to do what you were saying, bro. It's like in life, you could look at a situation negatively or positively. 99% mm -hmm. of the world looks at it with negative eyes. Hence why they always look sad, maybe. Sporting Liverpool should give you a positive vibe. And so right. it's like 99.9% .9 positive, you know? Of course, you can criticize, mm -hmm. no problem. But always having that negative vibe on, on a great club like Liverpool just doesn't suit each other, you know. Uh, yeah. Press the like, subscribe, and um, great talking to you guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess you could say with that, we're going to be out. Big up to Nigel for the kind words, by the way. Thank you very much. And to, uh, yeah, to the chat for the kind words as well. Um, uh, I would no, like you're to definitely... all right, Nigel. Don't worry. I, 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 first offer is fine for me, you know. Yeah. Co pilot. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. He, he, Don't he, worry, he Nigel. Likes, I'm cool. Yeah, he he's likes to be on the front line anyway, so it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's more so, like I said, hey, I appreciate everyone for joining us today. I appreciate you guys for contributing, commenting, bringing in some, some, uh, some interesting points that that we didn't even get to bring up ourselves, but by you being here and, and including your comments, you know, you get to like have a have a place to vocalize those comments and and bring it to the discussion. And I really do appreciate that. So I hope that you're here tomorrow. Uh, same bat channel, same bat time, as they say, right? And until tomorrow, um, if it says 7 p.m. on your watch or on your clock or on your cell phone, hey. Be sure to go and give a look for the Liberal Talk Man Show. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll see you tomorrow.